What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the City Life Project YouTube channel for yet another live fight companion. And folks, right off the bat, I got to tell you, I'm going to be whispering throughout this one. I'm not going to be hooting and hollering like I usually do. My roommates are sleeping. It's freaking midnight right now. But the opening ceremonies are going on right now. Ryzen 43. What a tremendous intro to this event as well. Shout out to everyone who's joining. I know there's not going to be too many here tonight, but I appreciate every single one of you. We got Lenny Hart, the great Lenny Hart, announcing the fighters right now. The opening ceremonies for Ryzen 43. Let's freaking go. Matt saying he's a dumbass. Long time no see, Jay. Shout out to the exclusive members here. What's going on, guys? What's up, Diego? What fight are you looking forward to, brother? Let's fucking go. Ryzen 43. I've been waiting for this. I'm using a VPN to watch the commentary in, in Japanese. Anyway, to see the English version. Dude, guys. Ryoga Hirano is such... Against... Uh, Kensei Yamaka. That's going to be such a good fight. I mean, there's so many good fights here. There's so many good fights here tonight, folks. Zoomer, I, I, buy, I buy the pay-per-views for this one, so I really don't know. Um... These ones are very hard to find online, so I just I just bite the bullet. So I, I just paid for the pay-per-view on uh, fight.tv. What is up, Grave Digger Jones? I hope this isn't picking up too much of the mic. I'm trying to keep the volume pretty low. You guys can hear me okay. Again, sorry I have to whisper, but it is what it is when you got roommates, am I right? <laughs> Again, if you didn't see my predictions video for Ryzen, it is still up. You can fire through it quick. Uh, there were a few decent underdogs that I chose on that card. Uh, Tateo Ida, plus 105. Uh, I took Hiroki Suzuki, plus 135. Dun, 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 dun. I, think that was, I think those were the only good ones. Uh, Trent Gerdham. I took him minus 225, but his opponent was plus 163 uh, against Goto, and that's actually pretty good value there as well. But we'll continue to highlight those as the card goes on, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I did my research for this one. So again, Zoomer, sorry uh, that I, I can't help you out with the English version, buddy. I added to yesterday's burn. I can feel it now. Do you not wear sunscreen? You sound like me after the Bilal Burns fight. Or whenever Gordon's fight, yeah. My, I mean, full disclosure, I haven't lost my voice. I'm just whispering because we got a long night, long night ahead of us. Just gonna say hi and probably see the card another time. Fair enough, Gravedigger Jones. Fair enough, buddy. Oh man, these intros, she just kills it, man. Well, Grave Digger Jones, I'll let you know if it's worth it upon watching this evening. Yamate! Oh, Kinoshita almost took a tumble there. Is it a different rule set or all MMA? Oh, dude, it's the it, it is a different rule set. So the fights are judged as a whole, not 10 point must system. Uh, you're not allowed to stand. You know, you can't employ standing elbows, um, but you can soccer kick and knee grounded opponents. It's it's pride rules essentially. And there's a few kickboxing fights on the card as well. Oh, what's up, LFE? Thanks for doing this, bro. Well, thank you for joining, buddy. Thank you for joining. I appreciate you. Again, sorry I can't talk too loud, guys. I'm, my roommates are sleeping. I never wear sunscreen. It gives you the cancer, boss. Imagine if USC had this intro, right? Dude, I love the announcer. Lene Hart is just amazing. Again, sorry, folks, that I'm whispering. It's super late here in the United States where I'm chilling watching this and my roommates are sleeping. They think I'm crazy enough staying up all night for Ryzen, but it's amazing. It's worth it for Lene Hart's intros alone, ladies and gentlemen. Dude, there's a lot of fights. There's a lot of fights on this card. So 17 total, and how many prelims? One, two, three, four. So yeah, there's, there's quite a bit. There's quite a bit. 13 more. I 
I haven't worn sunscreen in years. Dude, I'm brown and I wear sunscreen. Uh, I don't think so, IFE. It, I couldn't find one. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I couldn't find one. And I just love rewatching these fights and clipping highlights and anyway so so i just i just i buy the pay-per-views for for the for most of the Ryzen cards so my apologies if i had a place i have a big i have a spot for ufc pfl and some of these other big promotions but for some reason they don't broadcast Ryzen. how many members you got right now bro i don't know that's a good question Holy shit, I better go grab a snack. Yes, JL, we're going to be up all night. But what's cool about the Discord is even if you just, you know, um, you know, support the channel, become a member for one month, like you're always going to have access to that Discord. And we're, we're going to continue to try to add more perks. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we're going to take some breaks throughout this card, and there's a big intermission as well. Zach Zane, the American... Fought in Contender Series, fought in Bellator, and now here in Ryzen. I cook myself once a year, and then I can fend off most burns the rest of the year. I don't know if that's a smart way to go there. All right, so first fight on this card is going to be... Do, 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 uh, Kenze Yamakawa against Ryoga Hirano. Assuming we've already gone through all the prelims. Yeah, we've gone through all the prelims already. And there's Chirzo Suzuki and Kleber Koike fighting for the champion, the 146-pound championship belt here. The young uh, Chihiro. Chihiro Suzuki, 24 years old, up against a 33-year-old whose last loss was to Patricio Pitbull at Ryzen versus Bellator 1. Very excited for Ryzen versus Bellator 2 later this year as well. Oh, no, I'm not losing my voice, dude. I just, I, 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 my voice is actually really good. My roommates are sleeping, so I'm sorry I have to talk like I'm 12 packs of cigarettes deep, but it is what it is when you got roommates who literally sleep right above you. Uh, okay, caught a nap. Now I'm ready to go. Probably. Rise up. I love how a lot of the fighters just <laughs> cover their ears. What an intro. Let's go, baby. Where's Jerry's belt? Is this your longest stream day? 5.30 a.m. till the end of this stream? Uh, we did this on New Year's as well. We did 18 hours. Dude, it is an anime intro. That's what's amazing about it. It's like it's it's if anime, it's like if Dragon Ball Z was real life, you know, or, or some sort of like fighting anime was in real life. Sprinkle a little Inuyasha up in that motherfucker. Like that's what Ryzen, that's what Ryzen is. The intros, JL, to the to the whole cards are amazing. Like the cold opens, oh unbelievable all right we got to highlight these first two fighters here so let's get to them one sec we have doo -doo 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 -doo. hirano that's right kenzie hirano doo -doo 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 -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. the bout orders are going to be so whack here uh where is it oh it might actually be in order here it might actually be in order all right, first fight on the card, and we have some kickboxing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Kenze Yamakawa against Ryoga Hirano. Do, 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 do. And Lene Hart announcing each fighter again. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Who's the first fight? We'll get into it here, buddy. I like I like uh, Ila. He's cocky and confident. Or oh, Ilya Tapuria. Why are we talking about Tapuria right now? But I do not like the fact that he said he beats Alexander in one. UFC needs. 
Uh, USC needs to make posters like that, right? Dude, I love Ryzen, dude. Like I said, the talent isn't there, so I can't put it in like my top three. My top three promotions right now, one championship, KSW, UFC. In that order, that's my, not how I rank them, that's my fandom. And then Ryzen's right after the UFC. Uh, what's up, buddy? Thank you so much for joining. Covered events virtually all day. Respect. Appreciate you, dude. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. That Hideki guy is still fighting old men, right? <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. We have Kenzie Yamakawa up against Ryoga Hirano. Where are they on my... So I had Ryoga Hirano winning this one, folks. Uh, at the time of my recording, he was the minus 150 favorite. I'm not sure how the odds have changed since then, but when I did my prediction video, he was the favorite. But this one's this one's really, really close. Ryoga Hirano was the favorite of Man, my computer was so tired it went to sleep there. I had to be like, yo, wake the fuck up. We got rising. Sorry about that. I don't know where I froze there. My apologies for that little internet gap. But again, I'm picking Ryoga Hirano to, to win this one. Minus 150. He was the favorite uh, when I did, again, a couple days. Uh, I think it was like two days ago when I dropped my prediction video. So I'm not sure how the odds have changed. But regardless, this is going to be a close one. But uh, I'm going with Ryoga Hirano for this. They're being announced in the center in the center of the ring right now, folks. Three three minute rounds, Ryzen rules, kickboxing. And again, sorry that I got a whisper. Sorry that I got a whisper, but the roommates are sleeping, guys. The roommates are sleeping. Old man, he's like the drunken master. Gets one shot on him, and he's stiff, flat, face down, unconscious. John Dodson fighting at BKFC 48. Dude, John Dodson goes back and forth. BKFC and Ryzen. Anyone else betting on this card? I got some parlays going. Just sucks. I can't watch. Does anyone have a Does anyone have a stream for our boy? Again, I'm watching on Fight TV. Sorry, guys. You seem like a cool dude uh, for a Canadian. Oh, well, thank you. Proud West Coast Canadian. Grew up in the Hawaii of Canada. Let's go, baby. Vancouver Island. Active A, what's your bet on this card? All right, I'll update the ticker on the bottom of the screen and we'll get right to it. Do, 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 do. All right, round one. Let's get it all! I really do need to get a bell for these kickboxing fights. All right, let's look at the commentary reaction and interaction, folks. Sorry, I got a whisper. I know I sound like I'm 12 packs of Siggy's Deep, but the roommates are sleeping, folks. The roommates are sleeping. I will fire up a poll question here in a bit, so let me know if you have any ideas for poll questions. Two minutes and 35 seconds on the clock here, folks. Nice body kick there by Hirano. Hirano in the blue corner. Yamakawa in the red. <laughs> Look at that, West Coast. You got me wearing my Canadian flag. <laughs> nice cross there by Ryoga Hirano. Each of them land a body kick. Two minutes on the clock. Left hook attempt by Yamakawa. Doesn't land. Ueda is your only one. Where did I put him? Oh, we'll look at him in a sec. I actually have notes for this, guys. I did some prep work. One minute and 48 seconds here in the first round. Going for the body kicks is Hirano. There's another body kick there. One minute and 35 seconds on the clock. Again, appreciate everyone joining us. We're setting the like goal here at 20 likes. We'll set the bar low here. Let's see if we can get 20 likes. There's 13 of you watching right now. If all of you like, well, we're more than halfway there. Yeah, he is pretty dry on the mic. 
straight right by Kenzie Yamakawa, but Ryuga Harina, or Hirano, my apologies, pressuring him into the ropes. See why I like the one championship ropes better? They're just they're just thicker. Fifty eight seconds on the clock here. Inside low kick by Hirano, followed by a high kick there. Hirano with the oh Hirano with the right hand and he drops Yamakawa. Hirano drops Yamakawa with the right hand. Holy shit! Oh my god! All right, he gets the count and he is back back in the center of the ring. Inside low kick by Hirano. And Hirano with a right hand. Hirano with an inside low kick. Hirano swinging for the fences now. Hirano looking to finish Yamakawa. Hirano with a right. Yamakawa still in this. They clinch. And the ref separates them. Dude, I did hear that. That is super sad. Using it as motivation, but yeah. That's tough, man. 10 seconds left. No, Yamakawa's still in this. He was dropped clean. The final 10 seconds of the first round. He seemed to recover quickly. As he's stepping forward and trying to land a big shot on Hirano, and that is it for the first round. What a first round. And again, I had Hirano winning this fight. It is not over yet. But after that first round, he dropped Yakamura. Or Yamakawa, jeez. Sorry if I mess up some of these names here tonight. I've been streaming for 13 hours, so... I'm going to put a coffee brewing, so we'll switch over to coffee here in a bit. Canada may be the second best behind your big neighbor, USA. If you had free speech to a not thrown in jail for misgendering someone. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Trudeau, I'm not going to lie. I will say, you guys do blow that shit out of proportion. If you spent a week in Canada and a week in the States, you really wouldn't see much of a difference, right? Especially small town Canada. But uh, no, I'll take the jab. I can take the jabs. I'm not. I'm not a sensitive Canadian. Um, but I live in the states now. Actually, I'm half American, half Canadian. Born in Canada, mother's American. Round two. Let's get it all. Oops, why did I write round three here? Oh my god, the night, the napitis is setting in. I may have to get some coffee in me sooner than later. I'm Good sheet. Nice body kick there by Yamakawa. I saw Volkan is fighting Asmat in Paris. Hopefully he can turn that frown upside down, man. He looks sad. Ashley, what's up, Ashley? Uh, thank you so much for joining. It's been a while. Um, I'm watching it on Fight TV. I bought the pay-per-view. I couldn't find any other, where, any other place to watch this. If anyone has a place to watch this, please let Ashley know in the live chat. Yeah, I, I bought the pay-per-view. 20 bucks, fight.tv. Fight.tv. Oh, and a nice right hand there. Oh, and Yamakawa just dropped Hirano. Yamakawa just dropped Hirano with the right hand. They've each dropped each other. Hirano dropped Yamakawa in the first round. Yamakawa dropped Hirano here in the second. And there's a counter left by Yamakawa as Hirano ran towards him shooting. Throwing, I should say. Second drop in the second round. Body kick by Hirano. Yamakawa looking to end this, and he doesn't. It is all over. It is all over. I'm gonna finish it. It is all over. The first round success. My pick, the favorite going into this one, gets TKO. That is three knockdowns. Oh, 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 shit. Shit. oh, oh shit! Oh my god! Oh. And unlike, <laughs> unlike fucking PFL, where it takes them forever to announce the winner. As Hirano is laboring on the ground, they've already announced the winner. Why is my pen not working? No. None of my pens are working. God damn it. Anyways, back to the comments we go. I want to see some soccer kicks. Well, this is kickboxing right now. We'll get to MMA soon. Just a few more eyes. Proud Canadian Albertan. Ashley, when I graduated, um, when I graduated high school, literally, I was 18 years old. I moved to Calgary for three years. Love Calgary, one of the most underrated cities in Canada. 
and I met so many great people in, you know, rural North Alberta. That was some of the best. That was, that was like the best three years of my life. Well, go to New York and Cali, then come to Toronto and Vancouver and tell me what is better. I've been to California. I've been to New York. Uh, Toronto's a city. Vancouver's a city. New York's a state. California's a state. Uh, again, this is kickboxing, buddy. So three knockdowns and that ends the fight in a round. And uh, so in Ryzen, if you if you guys don't know, right when the fight ends, right when the guy's knocked out, the celebration starts and they hand the mic to the winner who gets to address the audience. So it is pretty cool. You're not necessarily interviewed. You get to give your piece to the audience, which is pretty cool. I don't know what I did with my phone. Okay, Los Angeles and New York City. You know what I meant. <laughs> I've been to LA. I've been to uh, New York. They're both very busy cities. I have to say, like, I, I enjoyed my time in New York more. Toronto is like Canada's New York. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I just prefer BC. It's 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 kind of like Minnesota. There's a lot of camping and shit that you can do. Um, I mean, Vancouver Island is our Hawaii, so, but I mean, I love Canada. And like I said, I love exploring a lot of Canada. I can't wait to go up and explore the Northwest Territories, Yukon. All right. Next year on the card, ladies and gentlemen, we have Marina Kuma, uh, Kumagai against AOE or AOE. Kuriyama. Uh, first MMA fight on this main card in the bantamweight division. We'll highlight the fighters here in just a moment. I'm just going to highlight the ticker on the bottom of the screen. So yeah, 134 pounds these women will be fighting at. And I'm pretty sure I made a pick here on my notes. And I fucking love these intro videos for Ryzen. Guys, you're just going to hear me swoon all night. Like, everything about how Ryzen puts together a fight card, the presentation, the intro videos, like, I love that shit. You plan on living in Yellowknife for a couple years? Probably not living in Yellowknife, but I'd love to explore it. I'd love to explore it. I just like, I'm one of those weirdos who's like, I want to see like as much of my country as I can before I go and explore other countries. And if, hey, and if I don't get to explore any other countries, you know, before I die and I, and, and I have, but like do the whole Europe thing and everything. It's like, well, at least I got to see, you know, my home. Aoi Kuriyama, four, five, and one in her pro MMA career. She is two and two in her last four fights. Four and two in deep jewels, th uh, zero and three in deep. Lost to Rin Nakai via Rin Nakachoke in her last fight, was on a two fight win streak before that. Look, these aren't the two most talented MMA fighters in the world. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. Uh, Marina Kumagai, three and four as a pro in MMA. She's on a three fight win streak right now. She's 35 years of age. She is fighting out of Sapporo, where this event is being held right now. And again, folks, I didn't just smoke 12 cigarettes today. I'm just whispering because my roommates are sleeping and it's freaking 12.30 a.m. Central time where I'm at right now. Uh, one and two in deep, two and one in deep jewels. God, you have to love Lene Hart. Listen to her announce these fighters. It's a thing of beauty. Um, she's on a four fight win streak. If you count kickboxing as well, she beat a zero and two fighter, one and two fighter in deep. And then, uh, one making her pro debut in deep jewels, 39. So again, not the, not the two most talented fighters in the world. Let's be perfectly honest. 
I picked Aoi Kuriyama to win this one. There were there weren't even odds when I was doing my uh, prediction for this one. This pen, I believe, works. Here. There we go. So we'll see. There was no odds for this one. I just kind of went off. She's younger, and that's kind of about it. I, I watched a little bit. I watched some highlights of both of them again. Neither of them are, neither of them are that good. Neither of them are insane talents or anything like that but uh hopefully we see a scrap here hopefully we see a scrap uh alaska is basically canada yeah i'll probably go see alaska as well go see a nanix game by the way university of alaska hockey team has the best intro in all of hockey oh let's head you guys here I can't play it or I'll get copyright because they use a certain song in it. Which if you're a fan of Archer. Alaska is US. Yeah, no, but like we said, it's basically Canada. <laughs> um, this is their hockey team's uh, intro video. Check it out. It's amazing. Who are the champs of this card? So, Kleber Koike Erbst is the flyweight champion. And Chihiro Suzuki is going to be challenging him for. And th that's, the only, uh, that's the only title fight on this card. But some high-level kickboxing fights as we have. Bum, 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 bum. On the main card here, we have two more kickboxing fights. And Hiroki Suzuki, he was he fought on one uh, Friday fights not too long ago. Solid fighter. Only 26 years old, so it'll be interesting to see if he continues to kickbox in rising. Round one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it on! Let's get it on. Again, like and subscribe if you haven't already. There's 17 of you watching right now. If all of you like, we will hit our like goal of 20 likes on the video. All right, four minutes and 45 seconds on the clock here. Kuriyama in the blue corner and blue kit. Kumage in the red corner, white kit. I know, dude. It's a long 24-hour stretch. But I'm a fight junkie. What can I say? At least you snuck in a, a leg day. I've been sitting on my ass the whole day. Four minutes and 13 seconds on the clock here. Both them circling, trying to find each other's timing. Oh, and a nice overhand left by Kuriyama. Again, I have Kuriyama winning this one, folks. Front kick by Kuriyama. And Kumugai landed a counter right. Kumugai trying to set up that counter right. Kumugai threw straight left jab. Three minutes and 44 seconds on the clock here. Outside low kick by Kumagai as she punches the air in front of her. Probably because it's just so late. Three minutes and 26 seconds on the clock. Chat's been buzzing all day. It's a little slower here. And Gravedigger Jones, he didn't buy this pay-per-view either, so he usually stays up with us, but he went to bed. Harder to find this fight, too. Three minutes on the clock here. Trying to step in with that overhand left was Kuriyama. She couldn't hit it again. My apologies for whispering, folks, but my whole household's asleep. And I don't want to wake their asses up. Two minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Round one. Three five-minute rounds here in this MMA fight. Ryzen 43, ladies and gentlemen. Fourth fight stream in a row here on the channel. And ooh, inside low kick there by Kuriyama trying to set up that big left hand. Mr. Showtime. Female MMA fans are legit. Hit me up, bruh. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Showtime? Two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. There it is. That left hand landed. And Kiriyama knocks out Kumagai. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. 
Wow. What a knockout. She was trying to set that shit up the whole first round. First round knockout. Her opponent's laying there half dead on the ground, and the celebrations are already starting. What a knockout. Mr. Showtime came in at the right time. Wow. Damn. What a punch. Shout out to Kuriyama making this female MMA card interesting. She, to the audience. Oh, look at you. Smoke him if you got him. Smoke him if you got him, Kuriyama. Oh, my goodness. What a beauty. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Oh, my goodness. She's my new favorite female fighter in Ryzen. I'm not going to lie. Probably couldn't even name another one, though. I love that. Smoke him if you got him. Let's fucking go, Kuriyama. Shout out to BC, baby, Mr. Showtime. Let's go. Kuriyama, she's wishing she was smoking on that BC bud tonight. I wonder if I have, do I have the bong sound effect? Let's see. I might have it. Uh, this one's for you, Kuriyama. Yeah, let's go. Honestly, I was scared that fight was going to be a snoozer. Kuriyama with not going to address the audience here. She grabs a trophy. She's getting the fuck out of here. Mr. Showtime, I appreciate you joining, buddy. Thank you so much. We're going to be up all night. Thank God I got a real chair. If you guys, <laughs> I should, I should make like a little short and show you guys what I was sitting on like for six months before getting this chair. And it was only 30 bucks on Marketplace. Wow. Well, <laughs> what a knockout. All right, we have, and we move right along. We got Trent uh, Goodham against Joji Goto next, ladies and gentlemen, as we move along and we continue MMA, bantamweight MMA here, Ryzen 43. I'm going to make this a bit smaller. There we go. There we go. Got a couple notes on this one too, but let's highlight these next fighters in just a moment. I'm just going to update the ticker on the bottom of the screen. So far, two finishes, two for two, one in kickboxing, one in women's MMA here. Ryzen 43 is starting off with a banger. And Diego was saying that there were some good knockouts in the prelims as well. There we go. Man, I just love the intros. I love the intros for Ryzen. It's just like, like I said, it's like an intro to an anime. It's crazy. All right, let's highlight these guys as they make their walk out to the ring. All right, Trent. Goodham, 13 wins, 4 losses. He's 25 years old. He is 3-2 and two in his last 5 fights. From Western Sydney, Australia. Uh, 4 KOTKO, 6 submissions, 3 decisions. 1-2 and two in ACB, 0-2 and two in Ryzen. He won his last fight in the new era via rear naked choke in the first round, but he beat a 7-8 and eight can. Lost in kickboxing in Ryzen. Lost in King of the Castle boxing. He's fought in UAE Warrior, which is a good developmental league. Also fought in, like I said, ACB. Just hasn't put it together yet, but still very, very young. Making his debut. Okay, so he lost a unanimous decision. There we go. So he fought one kickboxing fight in Ryzen. And a few MMA fights here. But looking to get his first win in MMA in Ryzen is the young Trent Gerdham. Looking at his opponents, Joji Goto. 14 wins, 6 losses, 1 draw. Got Lene Hart. What an intro for Trent Gerdham here. As he makes his walkout 
to the ring. Uh, eight KOTKO, two submissions, four decision. Eight, three, and one in Pancreas, four and three in Shudo Japan. Coming off a loss to six and one guy via heel hook in Shudo. He's making his Ryzen debut, ladies and gentlemen, is Joji Goto. Before I give my prediction, before I let you guys know my pick, let's get back to the comments here. I know we're streaming Ryzen, but do you mind sharing your locks for UFC Fight Night tomorrow? I won't be able to attend your live stream. I will be posting uh, my picks probably during the intermission of this. I don't even have my notes in front of me, buddy, so... Um, I'm going to honestly, <laughs> my apologies, but I'm going to be focusing on the fights here. Remind me a little bit later, though, maybe during the intermission, I go through my picks. Um, but I will be posting my prediction video uh, before I go to bed tonight. My apologies for not getting it up earlier, folks. We had a full day of streaming here today. Uh, what a TKO. Wow. JL, we've been talking all day. Eventually, just run out of things to say. Rise and rolling through these walkouts fast. I get that, but not talking feels rude. <laughs> no worries. We're, we're watching the fights. It's okay. So, Mr. Showtime, remind me uh, in a little bit here when there's like a little lag in in the broadcast, and I'll go over it, and I'll grab my notes, and I will post a video, I promise. If you want to just hit me up with names and be like, who do you got between these two guys? I can do that, but if you want to hear more of a, like, uh, more of a preview, then... I'll do it when there's a lull. All right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. <laughs> and I don't pay for pay-per-views often, so. Want to be focused on this one. All right. Three five-minute rounds. MMA here in a body kick by Goto Trent Gearham. Caught the kick and now is going for a takedown. Pushing Koto up against Goto up against the ropes. Still can't get that single leg. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Benjamin. What a nice takedown by Girdham. In the rubber guard of Goto. Why is he wearing compression pants? Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess you're allowed in Ryzen, so why not? <laughs> Look at that. Thank you, JL. <laughs> Benjamin is just unhinged late at night. Goto pushing Gertham into the corner here. Back up to their feet here. And going for the guillotine is Gertham. Looked like he was going to drop for it here, but cinching that neck in here might be a standing guillotine. Gertham, look for that standing guillotine. Dropping now and instead now going for the back take. Good job rolling out of his Trent Gertham there up against the corner of the ring, fighting for position here. Three minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Again, I have Gertham winning this one. He was minus 225. And Gertham drops for the guillotine, drops for the neck, and he's... Is it under the neck? He's looking for it. He's looking for it. He's cinching it in here. Doesn't have the squeeze, though. Just is holding the neck from that right. Doesn't look like he has a hard squeeze here, or a tight squeeze. 2 minutes and 44 seconds. So again, yeah, minus 225 was Gerdham earlier this week. Plus 163 was Goto. So Goto was an underdog bet if you want to get in on it early. I don't know where the odds are right now live. But again, Goto it seems like he has decent wrestling. But that's that was the path to victory in my mind, is if he could out-wrestle Gerdham, who is all right in the submissions, but likes to swing and bang. Again, shout out to JL, shout out to Benjamin, shout out to Mr. Showtime, West Coast, Ashley, Activate A, LFE, uh, Cons 25th, MN Wild Talk, Zoomer Loyalist, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Diego.
Oh, a nice shot from the top position by uh, Goto. Benjamin Bilal curses a lot for that. I mean, that would be a dilemma, being a devout religion or being a, a, a devout Muslim and having to uh, having to deal with that. Let alone being a professional fighter. One minute and 18 seconds. One minute and 15 seconds. And Goto in the top position here. Girdham pulling guard. I mean, the women's MMA fight before this one was more exciting, folks. Oh, a nice up kick there by Goto. And a kick to the body on the way up for Girdham. Let's go with the soccer kicks, boys. Body kick by Goto. 53 seconds left in the first round. 1-2 and a body kick by Goto. The 1-2 didn't land, but the body kick did. 45 seconds left in this first round. Girdham. Stalking Goto. 41 seconds. And Joji Goto's throwing combos, but nothing's landing. Those ropes are way too easy for people to cheat. Yeah, that's why I like the I like the one championship ropes better, the thicker ones. Oh, and Gurdam threw a huge overhand. Nothing lands. Neither of them are landing with these big shots that they're throwing. 15 seconds left in the first round. And JL, did you buy this pay-per-view too, or did you uh, did you find a place to watch it? Oh, sidekick to the face! It wasn't like a perfectly placed sidekick, but Goto landed a side like a sidekick. They threw up and oh, left hand, overhand left, and he tagged him right at the bell, right at the bell. Joji Goto threw a huge left and dropped Gerdham right at the bell. Save by the bell, ladies and gentlemen. The Aussie got tagged with just a wild, like, random sidekick and then got dropped with an overhand left. Holy shit. Yeah, compression pants saved by the bell. I'm using VPN to change the location of Japan. I get on YouTube for free. Nice. I should have did that, but the last time I did, YouTube stopped their broadcast like halfway through, and I was like, damn, I, I want the whole thing. So I bit the bullet. I bit the bullet. These ring girls, though. Like I said, it's an anime. Rampage Jackson. I love how um, his first ever saint or first ever sentence he learned in Japanese was, <laughs> are you into black dudes? <laughs> Round two. Let's get it all. Say by the bell indeed. Diego's still here. What's up, buddy? And we'll say the ring girls on. I, got, I mean, we got to make a ring girls tier chart eventually. And Goto was setting up a reverse guillotine here. Four minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Oh, and this is tight. This is tight. Gerdham setting up a reverse guillotine and it's not yeah I just I don't think he has the angle here Goto seems to be okay one minute into the second round compression pants has no striking and needs to grapple clearly yet he has yeah, he's primarily a, a striker training at a Tiger Muay Thai. Now going for the guillotine, pulling guard, Trent Girdham. Hey, credit to him, he is trying to throw up submissions. But yeah, his game plan is to grapple. His game plan is to finish his opponent via submission, clearly. Three minutes and 31 seconds on the clock here in this second round. Oh, He's cinching it tighter and tighter, but just doesn't have that good grip. I love the rising gloves, by the way. I want to buy some and hang them here on the wall. They're freaking expensive off eBay because they only sell, like, signed ones. And Goatee here looking to get into the mount position. 
trapping that wrist of Gerdham, trying to reverse him here, and he doesn't. He gets beautiful back take, beautiful back take by Joji Goti. Beautiful back take. The body triangle is cinched. And he has his wrist trap. He actually pulled back the left arm of Gertam to single out, single out that arm to try to get his right hand under his chin. But Gertam now looking to reverse. Gertam looking to spin in that body triangle. He's almost there. He's almost there. And it is all over. What a finish. What a finish. Joji Goto with the... Oh, my God. Was that just a straight up... I didn't know if that was a twister. He set up a twister. He set up a twister. Oh, my goodness. That was insane. Oh, it it's Trent Graham was trying to reverse in that body lock, in that body triangle to get in the top position. And motherfucking Goti grabbed his left arm behind him and just fucking cranked. I mean, a modified twister didn't look like a traditional twister there, but regardless, he just cranked that spine and a tap. Mixed martial arts is not art. Meryl Streep. <laughs> He was the favorite uh, earlier this week. All right, let's take a look at the replay here. Let's take a look at the replay. So, Gerdham, you got the reversal. Body lock here. He had mod like a modified twister. Like he cranked the neck as the body triangle was secured. Beautiful submission by Joji Goto. Beautiful submission. I said in my predictions video, Goto was a good underdog at plus 163. And again, I, I think I recorded this on Tuesday, so this is a few days back. But wow, what a finish. What a submission. Again, I love how Ryzen does it. As soon as your opponent taps, gets knocked out the fight, you know, he's done. The celebration starts they raise your hand. They announce you the winner. Your opponent's still daisy there on the mat. And then they give you the mic. There's no interview. They give you the mic and you get to address the crowd. Fuck, how amazing would that be to go to a Ryzen event? Man, that's on my bucket list. That's on my bucket list for sure. Compression pants got dusted, man. He got dusted. And I picked compression pants to win, but I did say in my prediction video, because I noted it here, that uh, Goto was a solid underdog. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm... I'm one and two right now. I'm one and two. That was an impressive submission. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Man, well, so far, great start to this card. Great start to this card. Ryzen 43, shout out to all of you who are joining. There's not many of you, but that's okay. I appreciate every single one of you who are joining here, the regulars and those who are coming in and out of the stream. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, folks. Oh, and a little bit of a preview here for Ryzen versus Bellator 2 coming up here July 26th. It's going to be an absolutely stacked card ladies and gentlemen absolutely stacked card anyways appreciate every single one of you uh like this video if you haven't already the more we like the video while we're live the more the more youtube pushes us to new mma fans and we have a ton of new subscribers who joined us this last weekend so thank you to everyone who's joined this stream like and subscribe we do live fight companions every single weekend folks we will be streaming for 18 hours straight once we hit seven o'clock this morning we got a ton of great fights ahead of us though here so appreciate every single one of you we do live fight companions every single weekend like i said live play-by-play -play, commentary reaction and interaction with all you amazing folks in the live chat i don't always sound like a smoked 12 ciggies throughout the day but i'm whispering because my roommates are asleep folks <laughs> i'm being considerate 
All right, we got another MMA fight coming up here next, folks. We have Tetsuya Seki against Reiki Endo. Now let's highlight them in one moment. I'm just going to update the ticker on the bottom of the screen. These guys are fighting at 146 pounds. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. All right, so the intro video for these guys is starting there. Again, they're going to be running a lot of promos for the next big Ryzen event, Ryzen versus Bellator, July, what did it say, 26th? Uh, is Tapuria Georgian in Spanish? Yeah, people come at Izzy for it? I, who Who's coming after Izzy? Like I said before, I mean, I, I feel like every fighter, every celebrity, everyone has haters. Patty Pimbley came, uh, went after Taporia for that. Uh, Reikai Endo, ladies and gentlemen, making his walkout right now. 15 wins, 11 losses, 5 draws. Benjamin Alejandro Hernandez Morgado. Hello, friend. How are you? It's good to see you, buddy. Thank you so much for joining. Sorry, I have to whisper. My roommates are sleeping. I don't want to wake them up. It's good to see you, buddy. So these three different nationalities. Well, he's... Uh, He's Nigerian, right? Nigerian, but a New Zealand citizen. I don't know. Again, I haven't heard anybody make a big deal out of that personally. The only like brouhaha that, that ensued was when Drickus made his comments. You see about Tiara, Tiara versus Rodriguez is canceled because Rodriguez was three pounds heavier. Oh, Tetsu Terra, it was canceled? No! Damn it, I wanted to see Tetsu Terra fight. All right, next fight, ladies and gentlemen. Tetsuya Seki making his walkout right now. 15 wins, 9 losses, 1 draw, 29 years of age. Uh, 2 and 3 in his last 5 fights, and he's coming off a loss. 9 KOTKO. Two submissions, four decisions, two and two in Ryzen, 11, four and one in Fight Network Zist, ZST. He lost his last fight, unanimous decision at Ryzen, 37 to Yoshikita Nakahara, who's 15 and five. No shame there, no shame there. Uh, before then, in Deep and in Ryzen Landmark 3, he beat Haraguchi, who's six and two, and a three and O oh guy in. Oof. Ayumu uh, Yamamoto. Kind of gone back and forth between Deep and Ryzen. Before suffering his KO loss at Ryzen 27, he went on a hell of a win streak. Two, four, six, eight fights in a row. And some, I was going to say some, but a couple good opponents there. He doesn't have the best record. He doesn't have the best record. Looking at his opponent, Reiki Endo. I'm talking about not having the best record. 15 wins, 11 losses, 5 draws. But he's fighting in front of his home crowd at Sapporo, in Sapporo, Japan. 31 years of age. 2 and 3 in his last 5 fights. He's also coming off a loss. 5 KOTKO, 4 submission, 6 decision. 6 wins, 4 losses, 4 draws, and pound for pound fighting championship. 4 wins, 2 losses, 1 draw. In Gratchen and two and three in Pancrase. He lost to a four and one guy in his last fight. Ten and ten against Asami. Yeah, he hasn't done he hasn't looked too good in his last few fights in Pancrase. And he hasn't really lost to the biggest competition. Be, at least he beat a seven and oh guy in Nakagawa. Again, neither of these guys have the best record here 
for this featherweight fight. Who did I pick in this one? I picked Tetsuya Saki. He was the minus 188 favorite. Plus 140 was Reki Endo. He just, if you put their competition head to head, Saki's fought and beaten better guys. So I'm going with Tetsuya Saki. Round one, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Yeah, let me know your predictions in the live chat if you're watching this with us, ladies and gentlemen. Four minutes and 42 seconds on the clock. Oh, yes, indeed. Standing 5'10 is Seki. 5'5 is Endo. Huge height difference. Also probably why he was the favorite. <laughs> 420 on the clock. Clenching up against the ropes right now in the corner of the ring is Reiki Endo. Reiki Endo is in the blue corner. He's the shorter fighter. Tetsuya Seki in the red corner. Endo being more the aggressor here, trying to, trying to take Seki to the ground. Mr. Showtime. The Australian lost, dude. The Australian got twistered. Joji Gochi submitted him with a modified twister. Oh, and they separate their next right hand by Endo. Push kick by Seki. Seki stalking Endo here. Front kick to the face. That rocked Endo. And Seki with a straight left jab. Outside low kick by Endo. Endo's got some speed in his mitts. <laughs> Compression pass lost. Three minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Endo going for a high kick. Oh, and Seki with a straight front kick again. Oh, that dropped Endo. He dropped him there for just a moment. Endo right back up to his feet. Spinning back fist attempt by Endo. Then threw a high kick there. Straight right there by Seki. Seki's got the reach advantage. Seki's being patient. Why is Blondie so small? I don't know. Why is Seki so tall? Two minutes and 30 seconds on the clock here in the first round. Again, appreciate you hanging out, watching MMA with us all day, JL. Diego as well. Front kick attempt there again by Seki. Ooh, overhand right there by Endo. Beautiful one, two there by Endo. Two minutes on the clock in this first round. Oh, I mean, Seki has fast hands and he's trying to set up a spinning move here. Beautiful left hook by Endo. Endo and Seki with a good right hand there as Endo entered the clinch. And Endo pushing Seki up against the ropes here. He has the body lock looking to take Seki to the ground. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, eye poke. One minute and 11 seconds. Palm strike by Endo. Man, I would love to be hired by Ryzen. I mean, these guys do commentary from afar. That would be my dream. Oh, and a nice reversal by Seki. And Seki looking to get the back of Endo. Looking to get the back of Endo is Seki. In the corner of the ring right now. Appreciate you, buddy. Right back up to his feet is Endo. Endo now pushing Seki up against the corner of the ring. 30 seconds left in this first round, ladies and gentlemen. 
<laughs> a little dirty move there. And a good reversal there by Seki pushing Endo. Oh, and a nice right hand by Endo. They're just throwing bombs here. Final 10 seconds. They're throwing bombs. Oh, and a knee, a knee, and a knee drops Endo. A knee drops Endo. Save by the bell. They want to brawl. I want to brawl. You want to brawl. That was awesome. Saved by the bell. Endo got dropped by that knee. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Endo was dropped a couple times in that first round. Man, that knee was nasty. That knee was nasty. Yeah, I got Seki. I mean, again, the, the rounds, the fight isn't judged 10 point must system round per round, but so far, anyways, Seki's getting the better of Endo. Round two coming up here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, round two. Let's get it all! Four minutes and 55 seconds on the clock if you want to sync up with my stream. Again, Endo's a little fire hydrant, man. This guy just keeps pushing forward. Get He's got tagged three times, dropped twice in that first round, right back up to his feet. And Seki being patient, being patient. But he's going to have to do a little bit more as Endo has been a little bit more active in this fight. But Seki has dropped him with those big shots. And ooh, Endo almost stepped into a straight left by Seki. Shout out to everyone watching. I know it's not a huge crowd tonight, but I appreciate you guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Four minutes on the clock here. Three minutes and 55 seconds. Looking for a wild swinging left hook is Endo. And a nice right hand there by Seki. Seki's got to do a little bit more. Oh, spinning body kick attempt there by Endo. Endo's got like athleticism and agility here, man. Despite being rocked a few times, he's got speed. Whoa! What was that? A fucking sweep trip? Oh my god! Seki tagged him. Seki tagged him with a left and then tried to go for a knee. Seki tagged Endo again. I mean, slow and steady wins race. And there's a left hand by Seki. Knees to the body. Endo, Endo just got caught twice there. Three minutes on the clock here. Tie clinch. Knees to the body. Endo slipping out of it. How does Endo recover so quickly? And Seki controlling Endo on the ground here. Great grappling exchange. Endo's trying to roll out of this and get back up to his feet, but Seki here, quick on him. North-south position. Looking for the neck. Back up to his feet is Endo. Seki pushes him up against the ropes. Two minutes and 32 seconds left on the clock. Again, folks, I'm whispering because everyone in my house went to bed. Small house, walls are thin. Don't want to wake up my roommates, so my apologies for sounding like I huffed down 12 darts today. Seki, with the body lock control in the back of Endo right now, both of them on their feet, clinched up against the corner of the ring. Two minutes left. Two minutes left in this second round. One minute and 50 seconds. Oh, a nice right hand in the pocket there by Seki. And Seki just, he just has more power, clearly. Clearly. 
Oh, a couple knees there by Endo. I don't think any of them landed clean. Nice right uppercut by Seki. Oh, was that a shot to the balls? That might have been a shot to the balls. Tatsuya Seki landed a knee to Endo's nuts, man. And you heard a shriek. He went, ah! Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. All right, let's take a look at that replay here. Uh, I mean, I didn't see a knee to the balls. Dude, this guy's faking. This guy's going full Josh Koscheck. He didn't get knee in the balls. Well, I mean, I want to see another angle. It didn't look like he got... It didn't look like he got knee low at all. One minute, 18 seconds on the clock here. We're uh, giving him some time to recover. He's clearly in some pain here, but is it his nutsack? Or did he get hit high in the body? What do you guys think? Anybody who's watching the live chat? It didn't look like he got knee in the balls there. I don't think he's taking the easy way out. I think he's taking the... The little bit more recovery route. I think he wanted some time to recover here. And again, we only saw one angle. Maybe, maybe he did get hit there with, with something. But from what they showed us on the replay, I didn't see it. This Endo good guy is jacked, man. He does not look like his uh, little picture here at all. And well, Seki's just getting time to recover as well, folks. Okay, it looks like we're going to get back to action here now, ladies and gentlemen. One minute, 18 seconds left on the clock. Second round. Nothing but finishes so far on this card. Let's see if this one goes the distance. One minute, 16 seconds. High kick attempt by Endo. Going oh, straight right by Seki. Center of the ring. High kick attempt by Seki doesn't land. A little switch kick there by Endo. Not even close to the target. Straight left jab by Seki. Oh, a nice right hand by Seki. High kick attempt by Endo. Outside low kick by Endo. Twenty five seconds left in this second round. They clinch. Final fifteen seconds in the second round. Oh, and a nice right hand off the break. And they're just swinging. Final 10 seconds. And a nice right hand by Endo. Endo's throwing bombs. Endo's throwing bombs. Good head movement by both these guys. Oh, it looks like they're a clash of heads. And that is it for the second round. They threw bombs there at the end of that second round. All right, folks. Oh, beautiful right hand and a knee dropping endo. I mean, Seki is landing. He's not landing a lot of volume, but he's landing good shots. I should add a, should add a poll question. My apologies for not getting a poll question up for this stream. Do, 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 do. All right. Uh, all right, round three, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it all. Let's get it on. Oh. 
And a beautiful right hand. Seki knocks down Endo again and then lines an uppercut to Endo's desperately going for a takedown. Endo, man, he just keeps getting dropped and then getting right back up. It's absolutely insane. Up against the corner right now, Seki pinning Endo, fighting for position, 4 minutes and 24 seconds. Seki, free from the corner here, Endo trying to push him back up against the ropes. All right, what's your favorite Japanese promotion? Oh, beautiful right uppercut there by Seki. What's your favorite Japanese promotion, folks? Dude, and Endo just got dropped again. Nice knee in the tie clinch. Beautiful high kick there. What's your favorite Japanese promotion, ladies and gentlemen? Let me know in the live chat. Three minutes and 24 seconds. Endo moving his head, trying to get out of the way of the shots that Tetsuya Seki's thrown. And Seki's dropped him a few times in this round already. Oh, another knee. Dude, how is Endo taking these shots? Shot after shot. He's been dropped like five times already. Soccer kick. Soccer kick by Seki. What's up, Crippled Ham? It's good to see you, buddy. My favorite Japanese martial arts is uh, Kyokushin. Awesome stuff. And after learning about ninjutsu from the Sensei Seth channel, they should bring that more into MMA and rising. I'd love to see that. Man, Endo is rocked. Two minutes and 31 seconds left. Can Seki end this fight? Dude, how is Endo still standing? Crippled Time, it's good to see you, buddy. Thank you so much for joining. Two minutes and 18 seconds. How is Endo still standing? Endo's still walking forward and trying to throw here. Left uppercut. Right uppercut by Seki. Right hand. Another right hand. How did you not drop Endo there? One minute and 55 seconds. Joshua Fabi is the real martial artist. Going for a takedown is Endo. Does not get it. Body shots here by Seki. Fucking Joshua Fabi. That was such a crazy time in MMA when he was relevant for that year and a half, two years. One minute, 22 seconds. Seki in the top position. Endo is trying to go for a takedown. Stuff by Seki. North-south right now. Now he's employing some knees, trying to get into side control. Both these fighters pretty tired, but Endo dead tired here. Knees to the head of Endo by Seki. Final minute. This Will this fight be the first one to go the distance? I think so. And good, I mean, good grappling by Endo looking to get back up to his feet. 45 seconds left in this third round. Endo now with the reversal. I wish Fabio would try that on Gordon. He would teach that little boy a lesson. Yeah, I mean, I don't blame Diego Sanchez. The guy fucking cult brainwashed him. And I'm glad Diego Sanchez is doing okay today. Well, as well as Diego Sanchez can do. They're just thrown again at the end of the round. At the end of the first round, they were thrown. At the end of the second round, they were thrown. At the end of the third and final 10 seconds, they meet in the center of the ring. And they're throwing bombs. They're throwing bombs. Endo throwing everything he has. Straight left jab by Seki. Nice right uppercut by Seki. How is Endo still moving forward? This guy is the re... This guy's a zombie. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh,
They instantly bow to each other. What a fight. How did Endo not go down? And Seki looks like the the more tired guys. Endo helps him back up to his feet. Oh, my God. That is insane. Warriors, man. Warriors. I think Seki won that fight. He dropped Endo God knows how many times. Wow, what a what a crazy fight. What a crazy fight. Yeah, I can't imagine that Seki doesn't win this one. We'll hear the official announcement in a moment here as the judges make their decision. But props to Endo, man. Even if he goes now 15 and 12. Even if this even if this is his 12 loss, I mean, he's a tough son of a bitch. All right, we're listening in for the official decision. And the winner by decision is Seki. <laughs> The right man won. Seki should have won this one, and he did win this one. Uh, Junior Smooth. What's up, Junior Smooth? Your dedication to the grind, bro. Respect. Oh, I respect. I respect you, buddy. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be a crazy one. I don't know how much juice I'll have. I don't know how much gas I'll have left in the tank for UFC tomorrow morning, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. This man stays live. I told you guys. I told you we'd be doing it. And uh, my pick, the favorite going into this one, Tetsuya Seki at minus 188. And we get the win. But shout out to Endo. I know he's pissed off right now making the walk out of the ring, but the man's a tough son of a bitch. Again, Junior Smooth, thank you so much for joining, buddy. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, about to address the audience here is Seki. Um, wait, why can't I go back on this one? What the heck? What's going on here? Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. All right, next fight on the card, folks. We got uh, Suguru Nil, or Ni, my apology, and uh, Tateo Ida. Our boy, Activate A, he hits, he's actually watching this one closely. He has some money on this one. And who did I pick? Was, I picked, I picked uh, Tateo Ida to win this one. He was the underdog, plus 105 earlier this week. Ni was the favorite at minus 138. I think this is an unreal underdog pick, and I will tell you why. Let me just update the ticker on the bottom of the screen first. All right, let me fit on this card. We have Suguru Ni against Tateo Ida. Suguru Ni, 14 wins, 12 losses. He is on a two fight win streak, but unfortunately, he is two and three in his last five fights. 32 years of age. Is Suguru Ni. One KO TKO, 10 submissions, three decisions. He's 0 and 2 in Ryzen, 6 and 5 in Pancras, 2 and 3 in Deep, and 3 and 1 in X1 World Events, or whatever the fuck that is. He beat a 7 and 10 guy, a 4 and 0 guy. Oh, and someone in grappling in his last three fights. Uh, lost to a 30 and 20 guy, 12 and 6 guy. 12 and 7. I beat a 7 and 6. And like everyone he's beat as of late has had a terrible record. 3 and 2, 15 and 12, 1 and 0. Oh, like, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Couldn't even beat a 6 and 5 guy. Split decision in Pancrase. So, as you can see, despite having a lot of fights, he can barely beat anyone of note. And he went 4 and 6 on the amateur, did knee. But again, Ni was the favorite earlier this week at minus 138. 
Tateo Ida, again, this was a couple days ago, these odds that I noted, ladies and gentlemen, but he was plus, 05, plus 105. He was the favorite. And I feel like that's one of the best underdog picks on this card was Tateo Ida. 12 wins, 6 losses, 2 draws. 4-1 and one in his last 5 fights. He's been fighting in front of his home crowd of Sapporo as well. Uh, oh, CKO of the Year candidate? Could be. I mean, Aubert Mercier set up a pretty nice Leon Edwards style head kick as well, but fight of the or KO of the year candidate is definitely up there. It's definitely up there, West Coast. Uh Tateo Ida. What other uh, KOs you putting that up against? 12 and 6 in his pro MMA career. Like I said, four and one in his last fights. He is coming off a loss. He's 32 years of age as these fighters make their walkout now. Two KOT KOs, five submissions, five decisions, five one and two draws in Shudo Japan, and three and three in Gratchen. Not KO of the year is reserved for the best, so the UFC. I mean, I, I don't think so. I think uh, KO year of the year is KO of the year in, in whatever promotion, in my, in my opinion. We can have KO of the year in the UFC because we will see a bunch of those but we can see some honestly some of the best knockouts are seen on the regional scene because the guys go a little crazier right have a little bit of a bigger canvas to uh to employ their art but usually they do come from the usc okay anyways looking at uh ida who's making his entrance into the ring right now he lost his last fight and shoot over a KOT KO in the second round to a 10 and 2 guy. Before then, beat a 5 and 5 guy, an 11 and 8 guy, 1 and 3 guy, 4 and 3. Okay, not not too good there. Um, yeah, his not records. His records not much better to be perf perfectly honest. He did go 8 and 1 on the amateur scene though. And I guess he's fought Better competition. Yeah, I'm going. I'm still going Edo on this one. Locking it in. Let me know your picks in the live chat, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know your predictions for this next fight. Sakuruni. God, I love Lena Hart's intros, man. All right, making his walk to the ring right now is Gruni. Where did I put my water? Oh, I didn't. I didn't bring any snacks handy. Goddamn. Let's see how many more fights until the intermission. There's going to be a pretty big intermission on this card, too, folks. Just heads up. Okay, so one, two, three, four more fights until the intermission. I think we could last until then. I think we could last until then. Well, we'll see. If there's a quick knockout, I may run upstairs and grab a snack. Again, let me know your predictions in the live chat, folks. Vote in the poll question. Like this video. We're trying to get to... 20 likes that is it if we can get to 20 likes by the end of this stream that would be amazing smash that like button if you haven't already all right folks fight's about to begin here fight is about to begin fighters are being announced in the ring again my pick is tateo ida earlier this week he was plus 105 I figured that, hey, there's pretty good value on that. He has the better record. I do think he's fought better competition. 32 years of age. They're both the same age, so age not really a factor in this one. All right. That's now it's And again, shout out to Crippled Ham, JL, West Coast, Junior Smooth, Mr. Showtime, Benjamin Alejandro Hernandez, Morgado, Diego, Benjamin, Emin Wild Talk, 
You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Ashley, Activate A, LFE, JD, Zoomer Loyalist. All right, folks, round one. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Three rounds, MMA. Here in Ryzen 43. And I appreciate all you hanging out with me. I have to whisper because everyone in my house is sleeping right now. Oh, and a nice kick right off the bat from Ida. Already, Ida landed a beautiful kick on knee. Ida in the blue corner, black trunks. Knee in the gold trunks, red corner. Outside low kick again by Ida. That spinning heel kick reminded me of Barbosa's, except the way they went down. Dude, Barbosa was so sick. When he entered the UFC, no one could figure him out right off the bat before they got him on his back. And Ida, taunting knee. Ida, taunting knee right now. Smashed it 20. Thank you so much, West Coast. Mr. Primetime, good channel. Not a lot of people cover Ryzen. Dude, Ryzen's one of my favorites. Oh, and a nice right hand by knee. And a nice right hand by knee. That's what you get, Ida, for keeping your hands down, motherfucker. Dude, Ryzen, it's it's one of my favorite leagues. I love it way more than Bellator and the PFL. Now, is it as deep as those promotions and the talent? No, but I absolutely love it. Everything about it. Trying to learn more about it. I mean, well, it's the third coming of Pride, right? When Pride folded, they started Dream, and then Dream became Ryzen. I mean, uh, Nobuyuki Sakibara, one of the original owners of Pride, he's the owner, or he's the, yeah, one of the majority owners and president of Ryzen. I got a parlay going, and you helped. Oh, I appreciate it, buddy. Um, I post prediction videos for uh, the events that I cover every weekend as well, as well. So stay tuned for those. Oh, a nice left hook by Ida. Again, Ida was my prediction. He's keeping his hands too low, though. He's keeping his hands too low. And he keeps getting tagged by Saguru Ni on the entry. And again, Mr. Primetime. I mean, <laughs> stop in for UFC tomorrow and you, you'll hear me at my normal voice oh beautiful right hand knee knocks out ida and a soccer kick he knocks him out and kicks him in the motherfucking face I'm gonna finish it. and it's, all over. it's allowed jl it's allowed you're allowed to soccer kick i mean he probably shouldn't have kicked him because he probably should have known that he was out oh my goodness Knee bowing to his opponent, checking on him, making sure he's okay. See how crazy Ryzen is? You see the guy, he's like half dead there on the canvas, and the announcer's announcing the winner right away. God. Ida is fucked up. Or let's take a look at this. Left hook, right hand. Ida backing up here. Boom! Right hand to the face. Yeah, that is fucking dirty. He hit him after he was knocked out. I mean, I don't think that's the reason, JL, for kicking after a knockout. I don't think that's the reason itself. I think the UFC's not savage enough. Wow. Like, I don't agree with kicking someone when they're knocked out, but I'm a savage when it comes to a soccer kicks and knees in the promotion. Well, I got played there, folks. The favorite won this one. The favorite won this one. Knee won. But Ida was fucking playing around, dancing around, keeping his hands down, and he got fucking lit up. Oh, wow. I still think Ida was the good underdog. I think he was just playing a little too much there. Oh, my God, being stretchered out. Being stretchered out. 
Oh my goodness. He's address. See, this is how crazy Ryzen is. He's addressing the crowd as Buddy's being stretchered out behind him. Oh, well, it's a good thing you did it, Mr. Primetime. Again, I stand by. He was still a good underdog to pick because the line was so close, but he was just keeping his hands down. He was taunting a little bit, and he got burned. Oh, my God, apparently they're friends. I'm listening to the... Apparently they're friends. Oh, my God. JL. JL, they're friends. Unlike that fight that we saw in the PFL, they would barely hit each other. This guy fucking soccer kicks his friend who is knocked out cold on the canvas. That is insane. That is insane. Holy shit, broken jaw. Completely broken jaw, says the broadcast. Not because of the kick, but because of this right hand. Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. Boom! And that second one, holy fuck. Yeah, the kick, luckily the kick like just grazed him. It's that, oh my goodness, devastating. First one, oh, that second shot, guys. Holy shit. Oh my God. That was crazy. I hope he's okay. It seemed like he has a broken jaw. It was that second right hand that cracked that jaw. Wow. Wow. Again, the kick was unnecessary. Super necessary. <laughs> However, it was that second hand that I believe broke the jaw. Oh, my God. Well, if you're not awake, now you are. Holy shit. Gordon doing that would be phenomenal with the leg kicks. Gordon and Bilal would be lethal in Ryzen. They would, but they'd also be it'd also be dangerous because both of them like to go for the takedowns, right? And they'd leave their head open head open for those lay uh for those grounded knees. So I would say yes, but it'd be a blessing and a curse. Um they'd have to adjust on their takedowns for sure, but oh yeah, oh yeah. I remember there was a one championship fight, guys, where this Mongolian fighters, his game plan was, I'm going to pin my opponent in the corner of the ring. I'm going to use the tie clinch to bring their head down, drag them to the mat, and then just knee them in the face as they're grounded. That was his game plan, and it worked. And it worked. Not friends after that. Guys, West Coast, you, you joined us for... for um. PFL earlier today, those two fucking guys, Schult fighting his friend, that was an embarrassment. This was crazy. Soccer kicked in the face after a broken jaw. Sorry, buddy. Addressing the crowd, sorry that I absolutely tuned up my friend there. Holy shit. Holy shit. By the way, shout out to everyone joining us here. That was absolutely insane. We do live play-by-play -play commentary, reaction, and interaction. I'm whispering because everyone in my household is asleep right now, so <laughs> my apologies for that. You'll hear me at full volume, hooting and hollering tomorrow for UFC. Hope you guys can join us for that. The friends got booed out of the building, as they should have. I blame both the PFL's matchmakers and them for just not doing their job because that that's what it comes down to. They deserve what what Moreno got thrown at 283. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's highlight these next two fighters as they make their walkouts now. We have Sori Oshima against Haruka Hasegawa. And walking out with her Deep title? She's walking out with some sort of belt here. Not the Ryzen belt. Uh, let's first, firstly go over Oshima. O Oshima. 11-3 in pro MMA. She is on a four-fight win streak. 
four and one in the last five fights, 28 years of age. She is the huge favorite, by the way. Huge favorite. Well, maybe not huge favorite, but she is the favorite. One KOTKO, six submission, not PFL huge favorites that we saw tonight, minus fucking 1,200. Uh, four decisions, two and oh in Ryzen, five and two in Deep Jewels. She beat a four and two gal in her last fight, a nine and nine gal in deep back in Rise in 36. She beat a six and six gal. Like I said, on a four fight win streak in MMA. Beat a five and two gal via, gal via arm lock in deep jewels 37. That's a good, that's a good win. That's a good win. 18 and five. That's not bad either. In Ryzen via split decision. Eight and four, five and two. Okay, not the worst. Hey, for women's MMA in Japan, you, you gotta fight who want you know who's available. Went on a four-fight win streak, and I was on another four-fight win streak here. And again, not the best record, not the worst. Looking at her opponent, Haruka Hasegawa, Salt. 32 years of age, 3-2 and two in her pro MMA career. She's currently on a two-fight win streak, 3-2 and two in her last five fights. 1-2 and two in Shudo Japan. I guess that's the Pancrase title as she beat a six and one gal and a six and O oh gal in Pan. Oh, she beat this. She beat Karen. She beat up on Karen. She beat Karen twice for the Pancrase title. And dude, listen to this walkout music. This is crazy. Um, but yeah, beat Karen twice in the rematch in Pancrase. How crazy is it that Pancrase is, is at their? is uh 300 plus events in it's unbelievable vote in the poll question speaking of pancrase what is your favorite japanese promotion let me know in the live chat uh folks i have saori oshima this one is a layup for her she's the favorite minus 350 hasagawa plus 250 underdog uh oshima i'm taking her minus 350 she is the favorite locking it in <laughs> Let me know your predictions in the live chat, folks. Again, huge underdog. It was actually a pretty big favorite as far as, or I guess given how these odds have been shaping out here tonight. And again, appreciate every single one of you joining us in and out of this stream late night here, early morning for you guys out east. Appreciate every single, I guess not early morning, just afternoon, early afternoon. Bro, I took this and Yachi from you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I I like Yachi. I think he's a good fighter. Yeah, and I mean, if Hasegawa wins this, then Oshima just really fucking sucks. Because <laughs> she is the huge, huge fit. And again, I found these odds. It was like some fucking... Bet you, it was a combination of Bet USA and some Japanese betting outlet. I hope I don't steer you astray, Mr. Uh, Mr. Primetime. I'm no betting expert. I'm no fight expert. I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan. But, uh, hey, I did my research for the breakdowns at least. Benjamin uh, says he cannot sleep. Dude, uh, I just saw a... Benjamin, we, we just saw a nasty knockout. But he got cracked with two right hands, broken jaw... On the second right hand lands face first in the canvas and then gets soccer kicked in the face. Do you want to hear the icing on the cake? Do you want to hear the icing on the cake? It was his friend who did that. Unlike the PFL, Buddy was fighting his friend. His friend broke his jaw, soccer kicked him, and he had to be stretchered out. I'm buzzing right now, buddy. I am buzzing right now. All right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Oshima, the big favorite up against Hasegawa. Let's get it all! Hey, the last pick I had in the women's MMA bout on this card. It worked out, but Salt, a lot bigger than Oshima here, as you can see. And they're just throwing. They're just throwing. Yeah, Salt, five. she's standing 5-6. As Oshima stands only 4'11". Uh-oh, I didn't look at their height here. 30 seconds into this fight. Oshima looking to take Salt to the ground. Here we go. 
Oh my god, there are roommates. <laughs> We were friends. Good old Keemstar. Oh, and a takedown there by Oshima. Oshima got salt in a, not quite a crucifix position, but got her in a hold. And it's just raining down shots. Just raining down shots. Solid judo throw by Oshima. And great work for her. And that is it. The fight is over. Crucifix position. Oshima wins this fight. He's going to finish it. Let's go. Let's go. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I missed the dirty move. What was the dirty move there? Throw down by Oshima. Gets a modified crucifix and just starts laying down the ground and pound. Yo, bro, let's go. Let's go. Oh, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. Battle of the soccer moms. Dude, Oshima now on a five fight win streak, 12 and three in the promotion. Wow. Great. Win by Oshima. Dude, honestly, the women have delivered on this card. We saw a huge overhand left early on the earlier on the card. Who was that? Who was who got that win? Her name was oh yeah. Uh Aoi Kuriyama. Huge overhand left. Knocks out her opponent cold. And then we see a little modified crucifix position where I mean, let's be honest. They're not the hardest shots. There were some muffin shots there, but she just kept landing and landing and landing. I will have to imagine Michael commentating, but he will be missed today. Going to go smoke a joint. Be back for Yachi. Sounds good, buddy. Benjamin, don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Don't be trolling me as I'm beginning to be more and more sleep deprived. Okay, how many hours have we been streaming? So we did, it was a five, five and a half hour, one championship. We'll, we'll call it six. We'll say six, one championship. Then Eris was three. So that's nine. And then we did six hours of PFL. 15 hours of streaming. Holy crap. We still got a few more hours to go. Um, Benjamin Shouty, one of our exclusive members. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you so much for, well, hanging out with us as you can't sleep. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Featherweight MMA coming up next year, folks. And I believe we have two more cards left on this fight. Or oh, left on this fight. Two more. Did I say two more cards left on this fight? Oh my goodness. I need to get some more coffee in me. Two more fights left on the early portion of the main card. We will have a 40 to 45 minute intermission. Oh my God. It, whose kids are these? Are these twins? Cute. Aw. It looks like Oshi, Oshima's kids were there watching their mom. So literally the soccer mom. Um, anyways, two more fights left on this early portion of the main card. We got Yuta Kubo against Karate Kinoshida next. Then we got Daryl Lokuku against Minoru Kimura. Now you guys, oh, the, look at look at the little girl. She, they're going, peace. Aw. Literally soccer mom. L I, this is hilarious. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a picture of this uh, in our Discord later, Benjamin. She's literally soccer mom. She's got her two twin girls hand in hand, walking her out of the arena. That is amazing. What happened to Rose? What happened to Rose? I unsubscribed from Bisbing. He's getting cringe. I don't watch too many of his stuff. I think I'm still subscribed, but. Um, 
I do like Anthony Smith on the podcast. The, when him and that comedian uh, Gomez would rip back and forth, though, that was fun as well. Uh, she can beat the champ at 115, but she's already 2-0 against her, so they won't book another fight, so she's stuck. So sad. Oh, yes. So sad, so sad. I'm the best. <laughs> All right, folks, we have... Yutakuba, the smiling sniper, against uh, Karate Kinoshida. One and one pro MMA record for Yutakubo. He's 35 years old. One and one in Ryzen. Primarily a kickboxer, as we can see here. He lasts for it. Rise in Landmark Volume 4, where he uh, lost. And he's primarily he's primarily been fighting, or sorry, he won against a 0-4 uh, Keizuke Okuda. He did lose against Shinobu Ota, who was 0-1 at that time as well. Before then, he went on two, four, six fight win streak in kickboxing in the K1 World, well, yeah, in the K1 World Grand Prix in Japan. But look at the years between his fights, folks. He's not one of these kickboxers fighting like fucking 10 times a year. I'm kidding. They don't actually fight 10 times a year, but you know what I'm saying. Yutakubo. He is a... Let's see if we got any more info on Yutakubo here. Does he have a wiki page? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, he does. Let, let's see his record here. Coming out of retirement... 48 wins in kickboxing, 10 losses, 19 knockouts. So he's 48, 10, 48 wins, 10 losses in kickboxing, 19 knockouts. He's retired from kickboxing, one and one in mixed martial arts, like I said. Looking at his opponent, uh, Karate Kinoshida, 6 and 6 in pro MMA. He's 26 years of age, 2 and 3 in his last five fights. He did win his last fight, though. Fighting at 145 pounds. Dude, how, how amazing are these intro videos? Oh my goodness. 6 KOTKO, zero submission, zero decision. So all of his wins have come by KOTKO. Five wins in Chudo, Japan. Six losses, one draw. He beat his last point of view, right hook in deep. Lost one, one, one. He beat a 20 and 12 guy. Lost to a 0 and 1 and 8 and 5 guy, though. Yeah, his record's not that great. His record's not that great at all. Is primarily a stand up guy with a karate background, though, so I highly doubt this will go to the ground. Uh, Yutakubo, again, being the kickboxer. And here we see Kinoshita making his walkout in the gi. 27 years of age against the 35 year old Yuta Kubo. Da, 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 da. Oh shit, I missed some comments here. Smith can kick rocks. Oh, you don't like Anthony Smith? I mean, I'm not, I guess I'm not a huge fan of his, but I, I didn't expect that. Uh, this means why I come in Harrington is cool as well. Benjamin. Saying, imagine not being able to be champ because you've already beaten the champ twice. That's so weird. That is weird. Bisping isn't cringe. The fuck you talking about? Bisping is cringe. Believe you me. Bisping got me hooked when he demolished Guru online and Guru went whining to his audience. See, I wish... Uh, and Benjamin, Benjamin, back me up here. I wish that you would have... I wish that Bisping would have got you hooked from his fighting and not his podcast. Because like you like the best of Bisping, like 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 Ultimate Fighter season three Bisping, the heel in the UFC. But uh, hey, I'm a fan of Bisping. I just don't listen to his MMA content as much as I did when he started. Uh, cool shorts there, cool uh, kit there by Kinoshita as well. Believe you me, my word. 
I never saw Bisping live. See, I watched the season three of The Ultimate Fighter like on TV every week, and Bisping won that season. He was Tito's prime, prime guy. He's one of two English guys. Uh, Ross Pierce, the Ross Parsons, I think, was the other UK guy. There's two Eng there's two English fighters in that house, and uh, Kendall Grove was also on that season. Um. Anyways, folks, let me see my notes here. Bum ba dum bum 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 ba dum bum bum. Did I even make a pick for this? I can't even find it. Um. Yeah, I don't even think I made a pick for this one. I don't even think there were odds for this one. That's probably why I didn't pick it. Uh, yeah, there weren't odds for this one when I made this list, folks. So my apologies for that. Yeah, my apologies for that. I don't have odds for this one. So I didn't make a pick. I'll make a pick now. I'm going with... I'll go with the kickboxer. I'll go with the kickboxer. We're going with Yatakubo. Let's go, buddy. Besides Bilal's show, Bisping is the best in May news. He is reliable. Well, he's not news. He's more commentary because he's not breaking news. But he does he does talk about everything. I'll give him that. I mean, props him. He was he was one of the OGs who started on YouTube before. Now every MMA fighter has YouTube. Jamal Hill just started a YouTube channel too. Bisping, living proof that living proof that even journeyman can be champion with the right opponents. Um, have you guys seen his documentary? I haven't seen it yet. I heard it was really good, though. All right. Yuta Kubo is just being announced. Is that Yuta Kubo's wife? Oh, damn. Dude, Yuta Kubo's wife. He did pretty good for himself. He did pretty good for himself. Hell yeah, dude. Like I said, look. I ain't ripping on Bisping here. I loved watching Bisping. All right, round one. Let's get it all! And I liked him because he was the bad guy. He was the guy lipping people off after he won big fights. He was the one that everyone hated. He was the bad boy. <laughs> More so than even Tito Ortiz. Upon entering the UFC... Arguably, Tito Ortiz being his coach on the Ultimate Fighter 3. Going for the takedown is Kubo. And a good job by... Or so going for the takedown is Kinoshita. Kubo with some good takedown defense early, folks. Two, uh, one more after this, buddy. Sweet. I haven't seen it yet. I should check it out. I only speak American. I don't. I don't understand Bisping. <laughs> That's because you missed it, dude. You weren't watching the UFC in in those days. He was the heel, man. He was among the fans and the fighters. He was like one of the most hated fighters on the roster. But you know that's the, and it worked. He became popular because of it. And then later in his career, the fans turned and started to love him. I had no idea Felder was a fighter until I saw prior to Islam fight that he had, that he was the last time Charles lost. See, you didn't even know Paul Felder was a fighter. Dude, Paul Felder was a solid fighter. Cage Fury FC, if I'm not mistaken, on his come up. Yeah, dude, he was a good fighter too, man. Paul Felder was a good fighter. Now he, uh, now he's a triathlete. He does triathlons, which is why he's super skinny. Three minutes on the clock here. Nice right hand by Kinoshita. As they're back up to their feet, folks. Three minutes and six seconds on the clock. Yeah, Paul Felder, Felder hasn't officially retired yet either. But he said he's probably not going to come back to MMA. Two minutes and 55 seconds. Nice checked leg kick by Kinoshita. And karate and MMA guy in Kinoshita against Yuta Kubo. Talented kickboxer. Good job by Yuta Kubo stuffing the takedown again, but body lock here by 
Kinoshita and he gets the takedown on Yutakubo. Same thing with Dan Hardy. Yep, same thing with Dan Hardy, dude. I would say um, Bisping was on a more hated level than Hardy, though, for sure. But yes, that that's a good point. That's a good point. Also, DC found out when they talked about Jones. Well, DC doesn't do his research. We know that. Only Felder fight I saw was live. That was the crazy short notice RDA fight, dude. That was awesome. Yeah, he, he did pretty good. He has some crazy spinning wheel kick uh, highlights in uh, Cage Fury. Back up to his feet is Yutakuba here. One minute, 52 seconds left on the clock. One minute, 46 seconds. Atta boy, atta boy. See, that's why you get Fight Pass. The Netflix of UFC. Pretty much the Netflix of mixed martial arts these days. One minute and 30 seconds left in this first round. Yutakuba looking for that big counter strike here. Straight left jab by Yutakuba. I don't like you how he keeps his hands down for a decorated kickboxer. Why are you keeping your hands down, boy? RDA got squashed by Fiziev, though. Was it in the early fifth round that he got TKO'd? I thought he actually did pretty good in that fight. First three rounds, anyways. I did pick Fiziev to win, obviously, but I wasn't, like, totally, uh... Yeah, I wasn't... I'm not going to trash RDA for that fight, to be honest, now that I recall. But that was one of the first fights we streamed on this channel. Third fight that was trash. My third favorite, light heavyweight, panic wrestler, Gamrot. Light heavyweight, or lightweight, sorry. I was like, what the hell? Light heavyweight, sorry. My apologies, lightweight. Panic wrestler, Gamrot versus Fiziev. I don't like that matchup for Gamrot. I don't like that matchup for Gamrot at all. Fiziev has really good takedown defense, being a former Sambo champ. And if he forces Gamrock to stay on the feet, oof. I hope Gamrock's practicing his striking. Final 10 seconds here in this first round. Nice straight right by Yuta Kubo. And that is it for the first round. End of the first round here, folks. And honestly, the one and one Retired kickboxer is looking pretty damn good against the 26-year-old karate practitioner. I mean, nine years the elder is Yuta Kubo. He's stuffing takedowns. He's getting back up to his feet. He's landing some good shots. Not a bad performance. Not a bad performance thus far. Do, 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 do. Round two coming up here in just a moment. Gamron has good Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but he has trash striking. Yeah, my concern for Gamron in that fight is that Fiziev will just... Fiziev has good counter-wrestling, right? He's good re He's good takedown defense. So if he forces the fight on his feet, Gamron's going to have to... He's going to have to brushen up, brushen up on his striking a bit. Yeah, Jeremy Stevens was on his way out to... I mean, Jeremy Stevens was an exciting fighter when he was in his prime in the UFC, but... All right, round two, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it all! DC only beat Stipe the one time because he separated Stipe's, Stipe's cornea with an eye poke, making him blind in that eye, then came and knocked him out the overhand on that side. Dude, Stipe, the greatest heavyweight of all time. Why? Talk about uh, disrespect. I love how JL's like, I only, or I, I like uh, hanging out and with, with respectful people. <laughs> yeah, you're disrespecting Dustin Poirier. That's hilarious. He's the last person who would imagine anybody call a scumbag. Is Dustin, po Dustin Poirier, like, he's got charities. He's a family man. Like, how is he a scumbag? I'm so confused. Stipe is a tad overrated. Uh, I, I, Oh my god. You're calling the greatest heavyweight of all time. I guess in the UFC, because people will argue that Fyodor is the greatest heavyweight of all time. I, I don't think he's a tad overrated. He beat a green Francis by laying on him. Yeah. 
I I can't agree with you there, buddy. And I know the heavyweight division doesn't have a lot of title defenses, but Stipe has the most, man. That's got to count for something. That's got to count for something. <laughs> when you literally have the record, how can you be overrated? Now, John Jones could sweep in and take that from him? Absolutely. Then, you know, then we don't talk about Stipe in the same light anymore. Three minutes and 15 seconds on the clock here in this second round. Outside low kick. Everyone wants to talk UFC. Guys, it's Ryzen. It is Ryzen 43. We got to respect Ryzen here, folks. Everyone wants to talk UFC on the Ryzen stream right now. What's up, Nabil? Two minutes and 53 seconds on the clock here. What a nice takedown by Kinoshita. Um, Nabil, I want to know if it's time to ask, but I want to know your opinion for tomorrow's round. Brown, Randy versus Terman, Wellington. I appreciate it, bro. Because which ones are you fighting? Randy Brown versus Terman. Uh, I got Randy Brown on that one, buddy. I got Randy Brown on that one. I think that one's pretty easy money. And uh, here, let me let me bring it up here. I did pick Randy Brown to win. Do, 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 do. In the full guard of Kinoshita, or sorry, in the full guard of Yuta Kubo is Kinoshita right now. Two minutes left on the clock here, folks. Appreciate you guys watching. We're just going to do a quick pivot here and answer a question we got in the live chat. Yeah, well, I think Wellington Terman, despite being the prodigy, I haven't been very impressed with his performance. 18 and 6. He lost his last fight. He's what, plus 190. Yeah, minus 230 is rude boy Randy Brown. Randy Brown lost his last fight to Jack Della Maddalena. Jack Della Maddalena is going to be a force in the UFC. He's one of their best prospects. And the ref stands these guys back up, by the way. Though he trains, trains at a Teixeira gym, again, he lost to Andre Petr uh, Petrovsky. Andre Petrovsky is a good fighter. But his last two wins were Chirkunov and Sam Alvey. He lost to Bruno Silva, lost to Andrew Sanchez, lost to Carl Robinson. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of him. I'm just not a fan of him. Um, I do like Randy Brown to win this one. He's the favorite for a reason. 16 and 5. I mean, he like I said, he 10 and 5 in the UFC. He was on a three or four fight win streak. Mind you, not against the best guys in his own right. But uh but yeah, I'm confident in Randy Brown on that one. Lock it in, buddy. There you go, Nabil. Thank you so much for joining. Dustin is also a family man. How did... So Chandler exposed Dustin Poirier by Dustin Poirier beating him in a fight. Fedor is better than Stipe. I agree. I agree. Randy Brown better not be cop cocky other than that he got this. I really want Onama to get a ranked opponent after he wins. Didn't Onama miss weight? Did Onama miss weight? And that is it for the second round, folks. I don't think Onama's going to win, dude. He's the underdog, and that guy he's fighting is an absolute terror. I imagine Potan was a good training partner for Wellington Terman in preparation for Randy Brown. That is true. That is true. Like, that's the thing. Terman just hasn't impressed me yet. Now, does he have time still to develop? Absolutely. But, uh, and Randy Brown is, he's good. He's not great. Based on what I've seen about both, on based on the fights I've seen of both of them, way more confident picking Randy Brown. Nate the train. I stick by. Should have lost that fight. He lost the first, won the second, and got dropped in the third. And the strikes were so even. I love Nate the train. Poetan. Oh, come on, JL. You're a smart dude, JL. You should be able to put, you should be able to connect the dots, brother. Teixeira's gym. Poetan trains at Teixeira's gym. That's where Truman trains out of. It only favors Hillbilly Glover has better BJJ than Hillbilly. Who the who's or oh, Hillbilly uh, Terman? Uh, 
uh, I'll get the lock, buddy. It'll, it'll get the lock, buddy. I thought, uh, oh, beautiful soccer kick there, Lens. We're missing soccer kicks. Four minutes and 33 seconds on the clock here. Oh, okay. So, okay, I'm like, what, Terman's Hillbilly? What are you talking about? God, I love Sean Strickland, man. He's hilarious. He's hilarious, that guy. We thought Mike Perry was uncancelable. Holy shit. But, uh, man, good on Sean Strickland training with Poetan. Outside low kick by Kinoshida. Kinoshida going for the single leg takedown again here. Stuffed by Yuta Kubo. Kubo with a knee to the body. Tie clinch here by Yuta Kubo. But yes, he is a hillbilly. Well, who's more of a hillbilly? Sean Strickland? Sean Strickland's more trailer trash, where Bryce Mitchell's more of a hillbilly, I think. What do you guys think? Ah, uh, of course, of course. He called him out and Bilal didn't do anything. Bilal looked scared on that phone. I saw that video. Yeah, you might not like Strickland's podcast thing because he doesn't speak too highly about Bilal. Not that he like goes out of his way to rip him, but uh, Chris Curtis was teasing him a little bit. and <laughs> He had just a couple sentences and then moved on. Three minutes in, in the third round. Well, Strickland was also uh, yapping away at Izzy um, a few months ago as well. I don't know. He looked pretty scared. Two minutes and 55 seconds. Beautiful left hand there by... Yuta Kubo still trying to go for the takedown as Kinoshita. Nice takedown there by Kinoshita. Kinoshita's going to have to do something with these takedowns, though, guys. Kinoshita not employing any damage with these takedowns. Passes the guard right into side control. Now use those knees. Use those knees. You can knee grounded opponents. Come on, Kinoshita. Use that knee. Line up the head and use that knee. Boom, and there it is, a right knee to the side of Yuta Kubo's head. That's what we want to see, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. By the way, my apologies for whispering. Everyone in my house is asleep. It's 2.15 a.m. Kinoshita working here on the ground for the first time in this fight. Blah is ready for anyone, anytime. He knocked out an undefeated Brady. Smoked Luke in sweet revenge. So. Yeah, well, they're never. I mean, him and Strickler are never going to fight in the ring. Maybe in the streets, but never in the ring. They're so gassed. Pick up the pace. Yeah, I mean, a one and one kickboxer is 35 against a six and six, 26 year old karate guy. I mean, wasn't expecting too much in this one. Are stomps allowed? Yep. Yes, they are. You can do a fucking axe stomp while your opponent's on the ground. Again, what's awesome about Bellator versus Ryzen is they mix their rules. So you can have all the Bellator rules with the elbows plus the knees to the grounded opponent, soccer kicks. And stomps. 55 seconds left in this third round. In the full guard of Utakuba is Kinoshita. I mean, Kinoshita is going to narrowly win this one just because he's been doing a little bit more as far as the mixed martial arts. And with 39 seconds left, the ref stands him up. Chandler would fit perfectly here. Dude, I, I love it. A lot of fighters love uh, fighting in Japan. A lot of fighters towards the end of their career, too, are like, I want a big fight in Japan. Oh, absolutely. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, pride back in the day was so much fun because th these, are, these are pride rules, right? These are pride rules. Up kick by Kubo. Final seconds of this fight. Kubo on his back, and Kimi should have tried to line a few more shots. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> This fight went the distance, I imagine. 
Kinoshita is going to win this one. He mixed up the martial arts a little bit more. Yuta Kubo was wearing a little bit of damage, but it wasn't the most exciting fight. It wasn't the most action-packed fight, so we'll see how the judges score it. Six more fights. Holy, it feels like a long movie. Yeah, it's, I mean, Ryzen, it's a different, it's a different type of uh, promotion. It's not as like, it's not one. It's not like the UFC. It's not as flashy as one. It's not as like professional as the UFC. It's its own fucking thing. It's, it's its own like comic book. It get, it's its own am, anime series, real life anime. There is going to be a big intermission coming up to jail, so the night is just going to go on. They do an intermission for everyone in the arena to go, you know, reef so they can refill the drinks and all and all that good stuff. All right, official announcement coming up here. I can't believe you're still here, JL. This is awesome. I'm excited for the next Power Slap event. It has grown on me, Bisping. And Hilly have made this sport must watch. Have you seen the Blown Apart's uh, documentary on slap fighting yet? It's really good. All right, listening in for the official decision. Napoleon Blown Apart, best MMA YouTube channel. No way. No way! The kickboxer wins this one. Yatakubo wins this one. And his baddie, his wife, she is pumped. He wins this one. That just shows. And this is what I love about Ryzen. They don't give a fuck. If you're crotch sniffing, if you take down your opponent and do nothing with it and get stood up, they're going to go with the damage every single time. They're going to go with the striker every single time. Let's go, baby. <laughs> his wife's... I thought she was like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But no, she's just dancing there. Oh, not a stretch at all. Not a stretch at all, dude. JL, are you disrespecting? Oh, JL, you might be disrespecting Blown Apart right now. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Dude, he is the best MMA YouTube channel. And your favorite... MMA YouTube channel will say that he's the best MMA, U MMA YouTube channel. He's a MMA documentary channel. And every single fucking video slaps like Will Smith. Unbelievable. Seriously, man. I'm not even blowing it out of proportion. He literally is one of the best YouTube uh, document uh, fight documentary guys. So good. He, he even has one on your boy Fa uh, Fabia, right? He's got he's got a little sum for everyone. You would absolutely love it, Jail. I think you would really love Blown Apart. Um, you should really check it out before you say it's a stretch because uh, you clearly haven't uh, you haven't seen all the docs, or or you would probably be maybe maybe be like, oh, you know, Isha, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely up there for sure. <laughs> you brought him up earlier. That's what I was saying. He has a whole documentary on him too. It's awesome. Actually, it's a three-part. And his story is one of the parts. It's, uh, yeah. I, I found Blown Apart stuff, I want to say, in October. Binged everything. And, man, I still watch his Pride documentary. It's three hours and a half. He splits it up into parts as well. I've watched it, like, three or four times. My I showed my dad. He was into it. Uh, he has a, a Ultimate Fighter one as well. It's truly incredible. Oh, you've seen the CM Punk one. Well, there you go. There you go. And he didn't like that shit? You didn't like it? Anyways, I really, and especially someone who edits video, like I have the utmost respect uh, for Napoleon Blown Apart. He is, in my opinion, the top MMA YouTube channel. And, and I love how all, a lot of the other MMA YouTube channels say the same about him. Like he's in that top tier, which is just amazing. Slaps like Will Smith. I think so. I think so. Still got six more fights. Let's go. Beej is good. Beej is good. The difference between Beej is... Beej isn't... Uh, the editing is different. Beej is good because Beej... But he doesn't... This is the difference. 
Beach is a very good storyteller as far as his commentary. And he does long commentary videos and they're amazing. And I like the art that he does in the background, right? I mean, the work that Napoleon Blown Apart puts into his videos, though, the humor, the inside jokes that you start to get, the characters in his documentaries and shows, right? Huruga! Like, he's on a next level. His editing is unbelievable. Um, He's getting constantly demonetized. He's like, you know what? I just love making these videos for diehard MMA fans. And though I love Beej, and actually I've been listening to Beej and watching his channel longer... Again, for me, Napoleon Blown Apart, he is the bar. And and no one has passed it yet in, as far as um, MMA documentaries on, on, you know, YouTube MMA documentaries. And again, I love the humor in it. I think his, he's quick-witted. I, I I like his, I just like the voice. I mean, yeah, shout out to him. I reached out to him. I, I'm hoping to interview him soon. Um, But no, shout out to Beach Frequency as well. Actually, I first saw him with his Brendan Schaub one, and then I dove in to think. But that's the thing, too. Beige is not just MMA. Or it's just not just fight stuff, which it's fine. I kind of dig the the comedy and uh, and the mixed martial arts portion of it as well. Uh, where are we at here? Where are we at here? All right, folks. Minoru Kimura. Minoru Kimura has fought once in Ryzen MMA before, and he got knocked the fuck out by Crazy Horse. That's right, Charles Bennett. He got knocked out by Crazy Horse in the beginning of the first round. Slaps like Will Smith. Or Rick James. What did the five fingers say to his face? Slap. All right, six more fights, ladies and gentlemen. We have the final fight before we go to intermission here next, ladies and gentlemen. The final fight before we go to intermission. And we have Minoru Philip Kimura against Daryl Lukuku. And again, shout out to everyone watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an upload. All right, I'll update the ticker on the bottom of the screen. And then we'll get into this kickboxing fight here. And again, I really dig Japanese kickboxing. I wasn't able to watch the, the last K1 Grand Prix. Unfortunately, missed it. I heard it was awesome. I heard there was some controversy, <laughs> as there are in Japanese kickboxing. As there is, I should say. Uh, Crazy Horse knocked out the axe murderer, so I don't like him. Uh, Crazy Horse, uh, speaking of um, Napoleon Blown Apart, he did a, a documentary on Crazy Horse, too. There it is! There it is! Boom! What a knockout. Yeah, Crazy Horse is, in fact, crazy. All right, let's take a look at both these guys. Uh, Minoru Kimura, let's take a look at his record here. One of the axe murders prodigies. Uh, he has a kickboxing record of 37 wins, 29 via knockout, and 10 losses. 37 wins, 10 losses in kickboxing. 29 knockouts for Minoru Kimura. Looking at his opponent, Daryl Lokuku. Let's see what his record is. Let's see if we can find him. Uh, Looks like I can't find an expanded record. 11 wins, 6 losses, and 1 draw. But that's an MMA. Oh, he's fought Lethway a couple times. He's fought custom rules and a ton of MMA fights. So so not primarily a kickboxer by the looks of it is Daryl Lukoku. Looks like he's a MMA striker and he's fought some Lethway. So he's badass as fuck as Lethway is a savage sport. Four one and one in kickboxing, 30 years old. 
161 pounds. I mean, he looks like he's a massive tank. He looks like he has some knockout power. But Minoru Kimura, 29 years old, more experienced, 29 knockouts in his own right. And I believe Kimura is the big favorite. Yeah, Kimura is the huge favorite. Minus 350, plus 240 is Daryl Nokoku. His opponent fights more MMA in left way than he even does kickboxing. Minoru Kimura, the K1 champion. He's a kickbo big kickboxing name. 29 knockouts in his career. That's who I'm going with. That's who I'm locking it in. Minoru Kimura. Let me know your thoughts in the live chat. He's Brazilian, but uh, developed and fighting out of Japan. I got Daryl, says Diego. Let me know your predictions if you're watching, folks. And there's 15 of you watching right now. If you haven't already, like this video. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an upload, so you never miss a live stream. I get uh, I get Kimura on my parlay, too. Attaboy, attaboy. We have not taken a single break two hours and 25 minutes into the stream. After this fight, we will take a break. Oh, there he is. There he is. The axe murder. Fucking love Van uh, Vanderlei Silva. Again, one of my favorite fighters growing up watching him in Pride. This has been a fucking crazy card, bro. It has been awesome. 37, 10, and 129 knockouts. So yeah, we're going to take a little bit of a break. We won't like take a 45-minute break. We'll be in and out of the stream. Hell, I might even edit a little bit more <laughs> of some videos I'm working on in between. But uh, I am going to take a break. I'm going to grab a snack because I am starving. So former K1 super welterweight champion, former K1 welterweight champion. 160 pounds these guys are fighting at. Kickboxing with no elbows. Actually, the first fight on the main card, or I guess the, the, the latter part of the main card, uh, Genji uh, Umeno against Hiroki Suzuki. Um, That one will allow elbows. All right, folks, fighters being announced in the center of the ring. We will bring the ticker back on screen. Live play-by-play, -play, commentary, reaction, and interaction with all you amazing folks in the live chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're just trying to get to 20 likes on the video. That is it. Our like goal, it's an easy one. 20 likes. Like the video if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an upload. Vote in the poll question as well. What's your favorite Japanese promotion? Three three-minute rounds in this kickboxing affair. They touch gloves. Let's get it on. All right. Round one, folks. Let's get it all. Lukoku in the blue shorts. Kimura in the black. And Lukoku definitely has the height. Setting 5'10". On Kimura, who Kimura's throw the first shot. Outside leg kick, swing and a miss by Lukoku. Oh, and a beautiful left hand by Kimura, followed by a right. Kimura's throwing bombs. Big left hook to start. Covering up here is Lukoku, but Kimura throwing big shots to start this. Going high to start. You got to imagine he might pick apart the body here as he does start picking apart the body, trying to find an opening there to rock Lukoku with a big one. Now pressuring Lukoku into the corner there. Lukoku doing a good job of covering up, but Kimura is landing all the shots here. Beautiful right or left body shot. Oh, and nice. Oh, and he's out. He's stunned. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kimura knocks 
Lukoku the fuck out. He was standing stunned, stunned, and he falls right to the canvas. He was out. He was out, stunned, standing up. He was asleep on his feet. Look at the finish it. Hit it he was asleep on his feet. Oh my god, this is dead to pull his tongue out. How was that a dirty move? I don't understand how that was a dirty move. Dirty as in like nasty as in nice? How is it how is it dirty to knock someone out in kickboxing? You mean hitting him again after? Is that what you mean? Dude, I didn't even know what was going on there. Oh shit, I'm yelling too much. My roommates are going to get mad. I just heard my roommates get up. I hope I didn't wake them. I got too stoked there. All right, let's take a look at the replay here. Okay, body shot. Okay, left hand. Okay, he didn't land with that right. He did land with that left. You know... It's hard for me to blame these guys too, right? Because like you're in fight mode and he was stunned standing up. And in that moment, I mean, in slow-mo, yeah, in slow-mo, it's like, oh, okay, okay. I'm going to keep fucking this guy up. It looks bad. In the moment, I can understand following through. But yeah, holy fuck, that's, that's scary stuff there. Holy shit. I don't think it was as, as egregious as the guy going for the soccer kick upon the guy hitting the mat. Um, but yeah, unfortunate there, unfortunate there. Bro, I'm watching every live stream you have from now on. Hey, I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Or addressing the crowd right now is Minoru Kimura. That was such a crazy... I've never seen someone freeze like that on their feet. And it was a good thing that Kimura missed with the right. He did land that left, unfortunately, as Daryl Lukoku was on his way down and he smashes the canvas. The doctor's quickly in there to attend to him. He's not being stretched out. He's being helped out of the ring, but he's not being stretched out. I don't even think he knows where he is, though. Let's take a look at that one more time. Body shot. That seemed to hurt him. Left, and he was out. And then that pff, uppercut as he... Boom. Wow. Uh, remember when people thought Potan would be able to scrap with heavyweights? Man, that all got shattered after 287. I don't think so. I still think he can scrap with heavyweights. 100%. I don't think that got scratched at all. If anything, his chin is probably better at big, you know, w without being depleted to, to that weight cut. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to see him fight at light heavyweight because I feel like that is his, that is his quote unquote natural weight class. You know, if he let himself go, I, I mean, he could he could hang with the big boys at heavyweight. He'd probably have to. He probably wouldn't be as lean, but he hits. I imagine he hits as hard as most of those guys. It's because uh, it's because he's really lanky too. So that he's not even lanky because he's like Jack, but he's he's got those long ass fucking limbs. So, I mean, at heavyweight, sure he probably would get tuned up. Could he hold his own? Yeah, but oh, at light heavyweight, I think that's perfect for him. What is the best pay UFC pay-per-view so far halfway point now? Oh, man. That's a good question. That's a good question here. Let me quickly check which ones we've done. Intermission starts now, ladies and gentlemen. As they're going to announce some fights here. They're going to address the audience. And then the broadcast will take a little bit of a break, and so will we. Uh, let's take a look here, folks. Give me one sec. I guess shout out to everyone watching. I appreciate you guys. All right. Out of the pay-per-views that we've had this year, which have been the best? 
289, definitely not. Um, uh, Usman Edwards, I mean, that, that was a pretty good card, but mm, best pay so far, I don't think so. Jones vs. Gone, eh, again, not the best. Hmm. Best pay per view thus far. I guess that's it, eh? Hmm. It's the best pay per view thus far. Makachev Volkanovsky. Hmm. I mean, the Makachev Volkanovsky one was pretty good. Um. Edwards Usman one was. I mean, that one. Mm, I'm a hard. I'm having a hard time choosing. To be perfectly honest, there's been more fight nights that have pleasantly surprised me and wowed me than I think there have been some of the big pay per views. But I mean, I, I don't know. What about you? The Edwards one was pretty good. That knockout was beautiful. Then a motherfucker. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Let's go eat time. Joint time. I got to wait till the last fight to finish my rise and parlay. Atta boy. Atta boy. Okay, for me, worst to best. 283, 286. Okay, 284, 287, 285, 289, 288. I like it. I like it, JL. Let me quickly, I got I got the pictures of all them up in front of me here. Good choice. Good choices. For me, again, some of the sleeper fight nights have impressed me more. Leon motherfucking Edwards. Dude, I love that guy. Look at me now! Absolutely love that guy. All right, they're announcing here some fights coming up. Mr. Primetime. Wait, is this motherfucking Primetime Snoop? Mr. Primetime, are you Primetime Snoop on Twitter? Because if you are, we have fucking interacted many, many times, my man. <laughs> Please tell me this is Mr. Prime or this is Primetime Snoop on Twitter. That would be this would be a small world. I'm from Vancouver. We just had UFC 289. I'm dude, I'm from Vancouver Island, buddy. I just moved to uh, Minnesota, but yeah, I'm from Vancouver Island. Born and bred Campbell River, baby. Uh, now 26 was dry besides Leon. The Fiziev fight was awesome. What are you talking about? Dalidze was on that card too. Um, if I, That Dalidze and Vittori fight, that one was good. No, okay. <laughs> I only put 288 above 289 because Bilal was there in 289. Had us go a clean sweep and humble those Americans. I um, let's see if they're announcing any other fights here. Uh, they're bringing. I don't know who this guy is. They're all speaking Japanese, but he's uh, addressing the crowd. Oh, Canada. Always got it handy, buddy. Always got it handy. <laughs> it pisses off my American friends. Why do you have that Canadian flag with you? You're an American now. <laughs> so I wonder if maybe this is a staff who's been with Ryzen for a while who's like hanging up the gloves, but they just gave him some flowers. What sounds more interesting, Izzy versus DDP or Izzy versus Robert 3? I want to see Izzy versus Robert 3 because I think that second round or that second fight uh, was really, really close. I'm not like, I'm not butthurt at Izzy winning that fight, but uh, my dad and I watch it. And my dad, like, he doesn't even have social media. Like, he doesn't follow storylines or anything like that. He He's very much like, I'll watch the fight. I'll give my opinion on who won the fight. And he also had Whitaker winning that second one. Um, 
so I really want to see it because it feels to me like we need we need to settle the score. We need to see either Izzy just dismantle him or uh, the judges get it right. I want the former. Drikis Duplessis, that South Af African fighter, the real African. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, oh, we're looking at the... Okay, so Johnny Case and Joe Ferraro. Guys, they cover this event from afar. I want to do this. I want to do this for them. And I have a better mic than Johnny Case. He's using my mics that we use on location. Izzy Roberts kryptonite. Robert can beat anybody but Izzy. Again, that second fight was so close. So I, I want to see it one more time. So if Robert loses, what next? Well, we'll see you where the division is at. Let's see if that um oh that guy who's about to fight uh Paulo Costa. Let's see how he does. Let's see if Chimaev's in that division. So we'll have to see what new players are up there. But by the time they fight again, recover, etc., like they'll they'll be again, knock on wood, some new talent in that division. So, so if Robert loses, hopefully there's another guy or two that he can fight there. And Robert also talked about moving up a weight class too, even though he's super short. He's a big stocky motherfucker. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. Shout out to all 17 of you watching. It is 2.41 a.m. Central Time where I'm at right now. What if Cost and Strickland win their next fights? Um, well, then one of those guys, maybe. I'm down. I mean, I'm down for anyone as long as the new is if it's a new blood for for Whitaker. And for Izzy, I mean, probably. I mean, Sean Strickland, if he wins his next fight, that's just a new name. Um, if I mean. If Chemayev enters that division and, and wins one fight, you can give him a title shot. I give Izzy two to three more years in competing than retiring. Yeah, I can see that as well. There's 20 people watching, and it's near 3 a.m. You guys are amazing. Seriously, you guys are amazing. We are going to take a little bit of a break ourselves. Don't worry. We'll be back. We'll be back. I got to drain the main vein. I'm going to take a step outside myself, I think. Um, grab a quick snack. Grab a coffee. I got Strickland winning that easy. His forward pressure is interesting. I don't know about easy. I don't know about easy. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Another Canadian in the chat. JL's Canadian as well, buddy. We got some good Canadians here following us. Okay, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications so you never miss an upload. We are streaming UFC tomorrow morning, so join us for that. We're going to take a quick break. Five to ten minute break max, and then we will be back here on the other side to highlight the next fighters and get right into the latter part of the main card, ladies and gentlemen. Again, appreciate all of you. We will update the ticker on the bottom of the screen here. And then we'll get right back to it. I believe there's only like a 15 minute break left. So not too much time. We burnt a lot of the time there. So that's good. Appreciate you guys commenting. All right. Again, like and subscribe. Vote in the poll question. Ring that bell for notifications if you haven't already. Keep the comments coming. Talk amongst yourselves or take a break yourself. Stretch it out. Grab a drink. And we will see you folks here on the other side. Five to ten minute break. We will be back after the intermission to highlight the latter part of this main card. Ryzen43 live here on the Stay Life Project YouTube channel. Fight Companion. You all are amazing. I appreciate you all. We'll give you all a shout out at the end of the stream. But until then, we will see you back here. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> Hi, Nobby. They've already called me that. They've already called me that. <laughs> back on the other side folks keep the comments coming thank you guys so much for sticking with us here ryzen 43 live here on the city life project youtube channel don't go away we'll be back here after this quick break let's go
Let's go. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go!
let's go. And welcome back to the City Life Project YouTube channel. Live here, early Saturday morning. If you guys are joining us here in North America, early, early Saturday morning, 3 a.m. on the dot, to be perfectly honest. Thank you guys so much for your patience there throughout the break. Honestly, I just need to I needed to stretch it out. Stretch it out, and I threw together these fucking little cheese quesadillas. So excuse me while I snack on those throughout the rest of the stream, but right in the nick of time, Ryzen 43 continues on, ladies and gentlemen, and shout out to everyone who has joined us. Oh, I'm going to choke on this. 
<clears throat> throughout this stream. I was so eager to eat this. I just took a bite while talking. 2 a.m. Oh, man, I need sleep. Hey, buddy. If you need sleep, <laughs> I don't blame you for tapping out right now. I wouldn't blame you for tapping out right now. But um, again, shout out to JL, one of our exclusive members here on the channel. If you guys are new, so I'll turn myself up a little bit there. If you guys are new to the channel, we do live play by play commentary, reaction, and interaction. Why I'm whispering, why I'm, why I'm talking like a crazy person right now, <laughs> it's not because I, uh, I'm 12 darts deep on the Siggy's today. No, it's not because I lost my voice. It's because it's 3 a.m. Central Time right now, 4 a.m. Eastern, folks. And my roommates are sleeping, and I don't, I don't want to wake them up. I don't want to wake them up. So I'll be talking pretty quiet throughout the rest of this stream. I appreciate everyone joining us. If you want to check out some of our other videos where you see me with the same energy, <laughs> but with a normal voice, uh, go check that out. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like this video, vote in the poll question, and join us for UFC tomorrow morning. All right, intro video for this next fight is playing, so we will highlight the fighters in just a moment. Now I'm finishing this. I absolutely love it. All right, let's highlight these next fighters here. <clears throat> Man, I just need I needed a snack. I needed a snack. Genji Umeno, the king. 34 years of age, up against Hiroki Suzuki, who's 26. Now, Genji Umeno here uh, lost to Ren Hiramoto, an exhibition boxing fight. Was on two-fight winning before then, where his opponent uh, was out due to injury, both in Ryzen and in Knockout 22. I was on a two-fight losing streak before that. Fought some Muay Thai and kickbox, kickboxing in between. This guy, I mean, despite his age, despite the mileage on him, he stayed busy between 2020 and 2023, which is cool to see. Let's see if... I'm sure there's a wiki page on this guy. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what his total record is. Oh, yeah. Absolute legend. Absolute legend. Whoops. Wrong one. Boop, boop. Um, all right, Genji Umeno. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, 67 total fights in kickboxing and Muay Thai, 48 wins, 23 of them via knockout, 14 losses. So, 48 and 14 is his record. Looking at his opponent, Hiroki Suzuki, 26 years of age. He's just a young, and I mean, look, he looks younger than 26. He won his last fight in knockout 2023. He lost to Faria Aminipour. Split decision one Friday fights for Faria Aminipour is a solid fighter, ladies and gentlemen. Saw him fight actually today. This was a close split decision. Primarily he's fought in Rebel and Knockout. Let's see if we can find a wiki page on him. Probably not because he's still super young, but I did watch that fight in one championship is actually really good. It was actually really good. Whoa, fucking sick walkout attire for Hiroki Suzuki. Oh, 15 and 2 in kickboxing. Well, there you go. 26 years old. Uh, I'm pretty sure I picked Suzuki to win. Yep, I'm picking Hiroki Suzuki. He's actually the underdog, plus 130. And again, these odds, uh, I took took note of these just a few uh, a couple days ago, so they, they they most likely and probably have changed. Uh, but I took him at plus 130. I think that was a solid underdog. He's the prospect versus the vet veteran. He hasn't been cracked as many times. His chin's still there. Umeno is starting to get chinny. And Umeno at minus 175. I mean, I like the plus 130 on Suzuki more, despite the experience gap between them. So there you go. There's my pick, the young gun. I'm picking Hiroki Suzuki to win this one. Let me know your thoughts in the live chat. Who are you picking to win this one? 
And again, shout out to everyone who is joining. While you guys are voting in the poll question and letting me know who you think is going to win this fight, I'm, gonna, I'm snacking, folks. Usually, I hate eating on stream because there's some people who just hate it, and I understand you don't want to listen to anyone too, so I'll turn the mic down for a sec, but it's 3.06 a.m. My stomach is honestly making more noise. My stomach's louder than my freaking voice right now, so... <laughs> As Genji makes his walk out here, as you let me know your predictions, I'm going to munch on this little quesadilla. I just crank up the music. Turn down the mic, crank up the music every time that I need to take a bite out of the quesadilla. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Okay, we got Asian women rapping. We have Asian women rapping. Azumeno walks out here. Genji Meno, 51 wins, 14 losses, 4 draws, and 1 no contest. Okay, we got his whole team. Is this his whole team and family? This is crazy. We, his whole team and family are rapping as he's making his walkout. Shit's crazy, folks, but this is Japan. I absolutely love it. Oh, this is, this is amazing. I don't know if it's like his trainer or his dad or whoever, whoever those guys are, but this is like these old folks just dancing. Away. Oh, this is hilarious. This is amazing. It's like a choreographed dance. They plan this shit. What an entrance. Oh, this is crazy. I mean, Buddy's like waiting for them to stop. He's like, come on, I'm already in the cage now. Or I'm in the ring now. And these guys are still dancing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Genju Meno had a whole fucking concert as he made his walk out. Wow. Okay, fighters are in the ring. The concert is over. That that was insane. That was insane. All right, round one coming up here. Fifteen and two, Hiroki Suzuki, age twenty-six, up against again the veteran that is Genji Umeno. All right. Genji Meno, like we said, 51 wins, 14 losses, 4 draws, 1 no contest. He's 34 years of age. He is getting a little chinny. He is getting a little chinny. I picked the underdog to win this one. I saw him fight in one Friday fights, and I was very impressed. He was coming in as the... Do, 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 do. Whoops, this one was a winner. He was coming in at the... 
plus 130 underdog. I mean, he's a prospect. I mean, he's starting to get chinny, and he's got some pretty decent power, and he can go the distance. So I'm going with uh, Hiroki Suzuki. He was the underdog a few days ago. I imagine he still is. That is my pick. Like I said, I locked it in. Three three-minute rounds, but you are allowed elbows in this one. If you look at the Ryzen 43 fight order poster, kickboxing rules, but rules, but elbows allowed in this one. All right, so it's very much Muay Thai with big gloves. Round one, let's get it on. Let's get it on! Ooh, body kick there by Umeno and Suzuki trades. Oh, and a straight left jab there by Suzuki. Another straight left jab there by Suzuki. 30 seconds into this first round. Suzuki did a good job at employing that jab. Ooh, Meno with a nice low leg kick here. Straight right by Suzuki. That tagged Meno. Utilizing jab well as Suzuki. Body kick there. Ooh, a nice shot to the body on Suzuki by Umeno. Umeno with that traditional Muay Thai stance. Good leg kick check there by Suzuki. Oh, high kick attempt there by Umeno. That left jab by Suzuki's landing. Another, there it is again. And body kick by Suzuki. And Umeno rushes him. They clinch and they fall to the ground. One minute and 28 seconds on the clock. Try to go for the body shot there with Suzuki. Oh, nice body kick there by Umeno. They clinch up here up against the ropes. And the ref separates. One minute left in this first round. And no one's used any elbows yet. Elbows are allowed in this particular fight. Ooh, nice inside low kick there. On Suzuki. Oh, outside low kick again. Umeno's just piecing up that lead left leg of Suzuki. Again, Umeno with that Muay Thai stance. Body kick by Omeno. Oh, nice uppercut on Umeno by Suzuki as Umeno was rushing in. They clinch, and Suzuki falls. The ref separates them and resets them here. Nice body kick again by Umeno. Oh, nice left hook by Suzuki. Nice leg check again by Suzuki. Suzuki's looking good. Nice left hook again by Suzuki. Body shot by Umeno. And that is it for the first round. And both these guys have landed some good shots. It was so crazy. Genji Umeno's walk in was just absolutely insane. Um, I think Hiro Hiroki Suzuki landed the better shots in that one, personally. Oh, that body kick, though. Umeno landed that a few times. Looks like Suzuki might have a little bit of a cut above his right eye. Oh, yeah, right on the corner of his right eye. And the cut men can't. The cut men weren't able to seal it up by the looks of it. Yeah, it's still leaking. He comes off the corner. His cut men did a terrible job on that one. That's a terrible spot. All right, round two, ladies and gentlemen. Outside low kick. Oh, a nice body kick on Suzuki by Umeno. 
And Suzuki with a cut there on right above his right eye. Left jab with Suzuki. Outside low kick again. Umeno's piecing up that lead left leg of Suzuki. Good checked leg kick again. Oh, but that one got through. Fucking rights, JL. Two minutes and four seconds on the clock here. Oh, a nice body kick there. And Genji Umeno is... His kicks are deadly, man, and he's landing some hard ones on the body of Suzuki. And Suzuki doing a good job of reading it as far as when it goes down for the leg. But if you look at the right side of Suzuki's body, completely bruised right now. You only can take so many of those. One minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Meno with a high kick temp. Yeah, Umeno getting the better Suzuki in the second round. <laughs> My eyes are slowly closing, but I will finish this and most then have a quick nap to watch UFC. Only four hours of sleep. Yeah, I just don't think I'm going to sleep at all. I think I'm just going to go right through. Maybe I'll do a little workout. I'll go for a run or something. <laughs> 55 seconds on the clock here in this second round. And again, Suzuki, I think he won that first round. At least it was it was close, but he was being much more aggressive. He was landing the better shots. Genji Umeno. Crushing it with the kicks here in this second round. Another kick and another kick. So many low kicks. And he's really slowed down. Suzuki. Oh, 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 oh my god, Suzuki with the Counter flying knee. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Holy. Look at the finish. It is all over. Hero. Hiroki Suzuki. Hiroki Suzuki. Oh my god. What a. What a knee. What a knee. What a knee. Uh, oh. It's pretty far, but I have um, once once I get my bike tuned up, I'll be able to bike around it. Holy shit! What a knockout! What a knockout! Just when I was saying Hiroki Suzuki was slowing down, he just sends Umeno to the shadow realm. Umeno can't even get up. Umeno can't even get up. Oh my goodness. I told you plus 130. That was a damn good underdog. Here we go. Here's the knee. Ball! Timed it perfectly. Beautiful jumping right knee. Holy fuck. What the fuck indeed? Dude, that was insane. That was insane. Oh, having trouble even getting back up to his feet right now. All that dancing did nothing entering the, the cage. Wow. What a knockout indeed. That was crazy. That was crazy. Well, that was a good underdog. That was a good underdog. He was plus 130 a couple days ago. All right, let's listen in and see what he's saying to the audience. Oh, he says, uh, oh, what? Oh, he's, he's the big brother of, Ch uh, Chihiro Suzuki, who's fighting in the main event. So he says, thank you, everyone. I can't believe I didn't see the fucking resemblance before. 
Jihiro Suzuki is his younger brother. He says, he says that he was a little scared to fight under Muay Thai rules, but he's glad it worked out. Very thankful for his team. So uh, thankful for Umeno for giving him the opportunity for him to fight. He said, I will continue to fight kickboxing and put on a show for all of you fans. Also, he's the older brother. He's 26 years old, primarily a kickboxer of the challenger in the featherweight MMA uh, division here in Ryzen, Chihiro Suzuki, who's only 24 years old. I mean, this Suzuki brothers, man. Chihiro Suzuki, 10 and 3 in pro MMA, but... Fuck, he's also been kickboxing as well. That I can't believe I didn't know that. I'm such a fucking casual. Anyways. <laughs> I didn't connect the dots on that one. But that is so cool that we got uh, two kickboxers and one of them is a decorated MMA fighter as well. Good enough to challenge for the title anyways tonight. Awesome win for one of the two Suzuki brothers. Let's see if... His younger brother can get it done in the main event of the evening. But anyways, as we move up the card here, four more to go. We have Hiroki Suzuki versus Taisei Nishitani coming up next here. Fighting at 146. This is, uh, I believe there's no more kickboxing yet. So just MMA for the rest of the card, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm just going to update the ticker on the bottom of the screen. No more decisions. <laughs> Oh man, if you're tired, you tired, go to bed, man. It'll still be on YouTube tomorrow if you want to rewatch the rest of the fights. All right. Hiroki Suzuki. Up against Taisei Nishitani. Hiroki Suzuki, the general killer, two and three in his pro MMA career, two and three in his last five fights, including amateur, 38 years old, two and three in Ryzen, he lost to a nine and five guy and a zero and two guy, he lost to Hen, he lost to Ren Hiramoto in his last fight split decision, he was a kickboxer who started doing MMA. Lost to Nongo in Muay Thai in one championship. Yeah, he's uh, he's on his way out. But in his prime, he was a damn good fighter. Here, let's uh, get his wiki up. So yeah, Harori Suzuki, 54 total kickboxing fights, 42 wins. 12 losses and again he's 38 years old he's fought in one championship and right now fighting mma in rise and looking at his opponent taisei nishitani six and five in his pro mma career he's on a two-fight win streak right now and he's three and two in his last five fights 26 years old jeez so 12 years the younger Zero KO, TKO, four submissions, two decisions. Six and five in deep. 
like I said, on a two-fight win streak. He beat an 11-9 and nine guy in his last fight, and a 17-8 and eight guy in the fight before that, both in deep, making his Ryzen debut is the young Teisei Nishitani. Um, who did I have here? Who did I have here? This one is completely a pick em, ladies and gentlemen. Despite the age gap, this one's a pick em. Nishitani's coming in at minus 105. Hiroki Suzuki came in at minus 125. I went with Nishitani on this one. I went with the new youth factor. Let's see if he can get it done. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your picks in the live chat, ladies and gentlemen. Moikano wants some money. Just getting checked by the cut man right now. No, I just want to keep eating. <laughs> I forgot to grab my coffee. But I don't know. It's what? 3.30 a.m. I don't think. If I do drink coffee, then I'm never going to sleep. All right. You're entering the cage. Or entering the cage. Entering the ring. Right now is Nishitani. 26 years old, up against the legend that is Hiroki Suzuki, who's making his walk out right now. And like and subscribe if you haven't already, folks. I'm whispering because my roommates are asleep. It's 3.30 a.m. We're still up watching Ryzen. Appreciate you all who've joined us all day. We'll be back tomorrow morning for some UFC, and I'll be able to hoot and holler throughout that one. What an intro. What an intro. What an announcement, I should say. The two-way, two-way shoot boxing champion. He looks good for 38. Mr. Landmark. He looks dialed right now, too, folks. So again, three more fights after this one, folks. We have heavyweights. Hideki Sakine against Mikio Ueda. Then we have the Coleman event of the evening. Zach Zane, who's been on a terrible losing streak right now. Against Yusuke Yachi. And then we have the main event of the evening, the title fight. Clever Koiki Erbst against Chihiro Suzuki. Let me know your thoughts in the live chat, folks. I know this, the live chat has slowed down. At one point, there was quite a few people uh, here earlier. But again, it's it's so late for – it's so early. It's so late slash so early for us in North America right now. But uh, here, I'm here to take your questions. It's a comment-driven live stream. I'm here to take your comments, thoughts on the fight, thoughts on this card. You let me know, and we'll chat away. Let's uh, help each other stay awake <laughs> in between these fights. But uh, again, if you guys – are passing out totally understandable it's been a long day of fights and i appreciate every single one of you and most of us gotta wake up early for ufc all right here we go both fighters are in the ring and here we go both of them are about to be announced in the ring and then we will get right to it But again, that was it. The last fight for kickboxing on the card. All remaining fights on this card are mixed martial arts.
And again, we highlighted the fighters. We highlight the fighters. We run down the record prior to every single fight. I give my opinion, opinion that I want to hear yours. Again, if you're the, if you're just joining us right now, I'm whispering because my roommates are sleeping. It's freaking 3.30 a.m. right now. But we're going the distance. We're going the distance. We got a few fights left here. Rising 43. And I want to say a big thank you to everyone who's joined us throughout this stream. And now being announced is Hiroki Suzuki. The decorated kickboxer. He's dialed right now, man. He's absolutely dialed. Two and three in pro MMA. I mean, he's like fucking the perfect hairline for 38 years old. I mean, I'm 30 and I'm already like all the way up here. I'm still awake, brother. I don't need coffee. Attaboy, attaboy. I might need some coffee. All right, folks, let's get into it. You know what else I'll need? I need some motherfucking fights. All right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Three, five rounds. Wait, it's not just a whole round. Let's get it all. Oh, and right away, what a pace. What a pace. As Nishitani goes right away for the takedown. Four minutes and 30 seconds on the clock here. And Tessie Nishitani going for potentially a choke right here. Oh, knee to the head of Suzuki. And they're separated back on their feet. Again, Suzuki, a decorated kickboxer here. Hands are low there by Suzuki. Suzuki just threw a couple of huge wild hooks here. And one of those left hooks landed on Nishitani. Oh, and Suzuki just knocked down Nishitani. Suzuki just knocked down Nishitani. It is all over. It is all over. Oh, my God. It is all over. Oh, my God. That was some drunken monkey ass shit. That was just throwing windmill fucking shots there. Holy shit. I said this guy was dialed. He was dialed. Oh, and Nishitani is devastated. Oh, right, Nishitani's devastated right now. Suzuki. A good display of respect here. Wow. Well, my pick didn't work out. My pick did not work out on that one. Holy crap. What a fast pace knockout. Good morning, sir. Are you still alive? Bob, I told you I'd still be here. Dude, this card has been so much fun. The 38-year-old, the 38-year-old Hiroki Suzuki. I'm just whispering, Bob, because my roommates are asleep. Oh, my goodness. Holy fuck, what a knockout. Overhand left, overhand left, and it connected right on the jaw, then right into full mount. A ton of shots in full mount, and it was all over. Tried, he tried to go for the flying knee. Nishitani tried to go for the flying knee. Ended up getting clipped with an overhand left. Oh my god. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. And yeah, Nishitani devastated as he leaves the arena. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, dude. Olivier Aubert Mercier. He had some nice highlights, too. He's thanking everyone from the bottom of his heart.
Man, what a legend. That's awesome. We're just listening into the address to the audience here. <laughs> what a great win. Again, a very accomplished kickboxer. Over 50 fights. And now he's 3-3 three and three in pro MMA. And he just had an evil laugh sign off. This guy's a character. I love him. <laughs> What a beauty. What a beauty. Well, moving up right up the card, we go to our featured fight, ladies and gentlemen. Heavyweights. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful overhand left. That was amazing. Let's see what people on Twitter are saying about it. That was amazing. I love the celebration. Kaposa just just tweeted, literally just tweeted it. A hey, special guest in the house, a lean, mean Alistair Overeem. That was crazy. Holy crap, yeah, everyone's tweeting about that. Everybody's tweeting about that. All right, folks. N what a finished by the 38-year-old. Wow, yes. And from one old fighter to the next here. A beloved heavyweight here in Japan. Let's highlight these next fighters, folks. Featured fight, like I said, we have Hideki Sakine against Mikio Udea or Ueda. Updating the ticker on the bottom of the screen. Can you imagine being side in the face by this motherfucker? Holy shit. All right, let's highlight these guys. Hideki Sakine against Mikio Ueda. 49 years old. 49 years old is... Hideki Sakina, he is four and one in his last five fights. He is 12 and six as a pro. Look at this guy. Eight KOTKO, three submissions, one decision, two and two in rise, and zero and three in one championship. He actually fought in Inoki Bombaye in his last fight in December. Uh, got a win in a grappling match. Lost in Ryzen 37, but was on a four-fight win streak before that, fighting not the not much competition. Let's be perfectly honest. His opponent, Mikio Ueda, one and one in his pro MMA career. He is a is he a wrestler or judo practitioner? Twenty eight years old. Um, yeah, he lost his first Ryzen fight in the first round, ground and pound to a, f <laughs> he lost to a 53 year old. He lost to a 53 year old. Okay. He went to Gratchen, able to get a quick win against Moo Jae Sung. Who is Moo Jae Sung? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So this guy ain't that good, okay? This guy ain't that good. It's not like he's a young 20-year-old prospect. He's 28. I'm scared. I'm scared. 
I am putting my faith in this young guy one more time, like I did with, uh, like I did with Taylor in PFL. This is the last time. If you disappoint me one more time, Ueda, it's over. I'm not picking you ever again. I'm going with the young buck here. Let's see if he's learned a thing or two going up against. The 49, I mean, one championship pretty, or sorry, uh, Ryzen pretty much gave this guy two layups in a row. A guy was in his 50s, and a guy was about to be 50. He's got to finish this one. He's got to finish it. Or he's got to win, at least. All right, let's see how the young man fares. Let me know your predictions in the live chat, folks. I got Mikio locking it in. <sighs> Again, folks, let me know your predictions in the live chat. Totally down to take your comments. It's been a long day in this chair. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, making his walkout right now is Hideki Sakine. <laughs> Sounds like some fun music. <laughs> Some fun walkout music. And here he comes. <laughs> wow, nice mask. Yeah, don't don't walk down the stairs with that mask on. A Shrek. A Sakine. 49, he's still fighting. <laughs> 262 pounds he weighed in at. He's a big, big boy. I mean, it's a 28-year-old going up against a 49-year-old. This is crazy. Sakine's got 21 years on Ueda. 21 years. <laughs> the cut man's like, let me check you. Yeah, you think you think this guy is uh, not on the secret juice? <laughs> Again, folks, let me know your thoughts in live chat. We uh, we highlighted the fighters like we do before every single fight. I give my prediction, then I want to hear your guys' prediction. I'm one last chance to the young the young man meet Mikio Ueda, <laughs> but upon looking at Sakine enter the ring, I'm. Less and less confident with my pick. Skine, oh, gave up his career as a police officer to pursue his dream as an MMA fighter. Arya, Argo, let's freaking go, ladies and gentlemen. Both of these fighters are in the center of the cage. Center of the ring. Both of these fighters are about to be announced here. Then we'll get to this featured fight. Two more fights after this. The Coleman event. And then the main event of the evening. The title fight. Headlining this Ryzen 43 card. And again, I appreciate every single one of you who've joined us in and out of this stream. You all are amazing. Appreciate you all. We will be streaming the last stream of this weekend, likely. UFC tomorrow. Or I guess in a few hours. 
So join us for that as well. And again, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell for notifications. You'll hear me talk at a normal volume <laughs> for UFC tomorrow. All right, like I said, fighters are being announced here in the ring. Uh, Mikio Ueda weighed in at 242 pounds here. He, was like, he got a, a little bit of cheers there from the Japanese audience, but the fan favorite is Hideki Sakine. Who weighed in 20 pounds heavier. 20 pounds heavier and yoked for a 49-year-old. <laughs> but how bad are his knees? That's the real question. Oh, and a lot taller is Mikoeda standing at 6'2", 5'9", is Sakine. Yeah, it's, it's almost 4 a.m. here. All right, round one. Let's get it all! Oh, and some nice knees and kicks there by Ueda. Ueda, kick to the face, and that is it. Ueda just kicked right in the face. Kicked Sakine right in the face, and it is all over. Look at the finish it! And it's all over! Ueda came in strong with the kicks and smashed up Sakine's nose. What a victory. No. Oh! What? That just started. It just started. And just like that, we go to the main event of the evening. He needed that win. That was a big win. Well, he couldn't beat a 53-year-old. At least he could beat a 49-year-old. Am I right? Exactly that. Again, it's great to see you. Again, Junior Smooth. Again, great display of respect here by Mikyu Ueda. He's got, I mean, he's tall. He's got those long legs. Let's check it out. High kick, body kick. Oh, the knee in the clinch. Another knee. So two knees. Two knees and a kick to the face. Two knees and a kick to the face. No, Gramps lost. Gramps took two knees to the face and a massive kick. Well, my pick won. That's good. Uh, so, JL, Ueda's first, first MMA fight in Ryzen, he fought a 53-year-old who was like 30 pounds lighter than him, and he lost. <laughs> Maybe not quite 30 pounds, but he was way lighter than him, and he lost. So went, crushed a can, came back, fought a 49-year-old, and won. Anyways, that was an exciting heavyweight fight. We saw a quick, quick finish, which is what we kind of want to see in heavyweight fights. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but they're all on, like, the EPO, right? They're all juiced to the nine, so they're, like, they're really more, like, in the 40. 40 range. Oh, man. This guy got beat the fuck up. Uh, Junior Smooth. What I love what I love about Ryzen is as soon as the opponent gets knocked out, the celebration starts. Like, Ryzen will... There's no, like, wait for both of you to put your hands up. They go right to the center. They put your hands up, and they hand you the mic, and you, you give your speech to the audience. All right, Ueda is saying my goal is to become the best heavyweight fighter in Japan. All right, so I haven't done too bad on my predictions thus far. I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six. Six and four right now, and we have three more fights left on the card. Wow. 
Easy work, and we're off to the co-main event of the evening. Which, honestly, I don't see this one going that long either. Zach Zane is probably going to get knocked out. And he's, we'll get into these two fighters in just a moment. What a huge card. Now, I didn't even watch the prelims. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did not even watch the prelims. There were four prelims before this massive main card. This was a 17 fight. or Yeah, 17 fight card. 17 fights on this card. Four prelims. Oh my goodness. Four prelims, 13 main card fights. Uh, so the co-main event's coming up, and then the, so the, there's two more fights. Seventeen fights too many, in my opinion. They well, they oh, Alistair Overeem is entering the ring. Okay, we're listening into Alistair Overeem. It's not for me, uh, uh, Junior Smooth, because I mean, Ryzen they generally only do one event every month or every two months, sometimes every three to four months, and they got to keep their roster moving. All right, I'm, we're listening into Alistair Overeem. Dude, Al Uberim is so skinny. Uberim is so skinny. Uberim's definitely off the horse meat. Oh my god, are they announcing a fight? Is Uberim going to be fighting in Ryzen? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Oh no, is that it? Okay, he's just here as a guest. Now he's getting a picture taken. I was hoping they were going to announce a fight. Damn, I didn't know the Ryzen roster was so small. Well, yeah, and they're working in kickboxing now into it. Dude, it's crazy how skinny Alistair Overeem is right now. This bull, that, that's crazy. That's crazy. All right, off to the co-main event we are. So Alistair Overeem, he was invited as a guest, and they just invited him in to say a few words. I thought maybe they were going to announce something, but nope. Uh, the prelims went. First fight was a draw, and prelim went by knockout, then 3-4 prelim submission. Well, Uberim was suspended by glory because he was fucking yoked when he fought Baudahari. Um, he tested positive. And then Glory banned him for a year. He got a year suspension. I still love I still love Overeem. I mean, like, look, he's a shadow of what he used to be. Don't get me wrong, especially off the horse meat. But like, uh, Junior Smooth. I don't know if you're I don't know if you're watching this or not right now. But like, he was skinny, man. Like, I've never seen. I mean, skinnier than when he was in Pride back in the day. Got to get some sleep, man. Work waking up in six hours to watch UFC. Rocking with a lot of dogs tomorrow. Let's cash it. JR Smooth, it was great to see you, buddy. I might just stay up and post a prediction video. I might just say, fuck the UFC prediction video this week and get some sleep. But uh, regardless, I will see you on the UFC stream uh, tomorrow, buddy. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate you, brother. All right, next fight we have here. Yuzuki Yachi against Zach Zane. Yuzuki Yachi, 24 wins, 13 losses, but don't let that record fool you. Six KOTKO, 
two submissions, 16 decisions, eight and seven in Ryzen. He's fought some absolute killers. Beat six and four guy in Ryzen, uh, 39. He lost to Roberto Souza, who fucking solid. One of Ryzen's best fighters, who's in the corner of those last two Brazilian fights, by the way. 12 and one. Uh, he beat Koji Takeda, who is 12 and one in Ryzen. He beat Yuki Kawana in Ryzen. And it, it's interesting because he'll like he'll go on a stretch and win a bunch. He'll lose a he'll lose a chunk. He'll win one, he'll lose a chunk, he'll go on a win streak, you know. As of late, his record doesn't look too good, but he's fought some great competition throughout his career. He's fought in Bellator. He's been rising for a while, as you can see. He fought in Pancras as well. He fought in Shudo. So, I mean, he hopped around the best of what Japan offered in his development. And he's fought in the best of the best that Ryzen has put in front of him. And I've always really liked watching Yuzuki Yachi fight. But the only American on this fight card here today is Zach Zane. God's warrior, Zach Zane. 15 wins, 14 losses out of Hawaii, 33 years of age. 4 KOTKO, 10 submissions, 1 decision. He's 1-0 and in Bellator, 0-1 and in Ryzen, 0-1 and in LFA, 0-1 and on Contender Series. He's gone on a pretty bad losing streak here now he's lost to some really good guys he's lost to Takeda, Mamadov, Luis Pena. Luis Pena I guess is not great but decent. Lost to a 17 and 9 guy, lost to Loic Radabov, he's really good in Eagle FC, he's now in the PFL. But here we go, Zach Zane making his walk out right now. Before going on this losing streak here, take a look at some of the win streaks he went on, especially this one where he fought in Brave, he fought Alaska FC, he fought in X1 World Events. I mean, this win streak, this run earned him a, a shot on Contender Series in 2019, he did lose that. Won one, lost one, won one in Bellator, and it just has not looked good since. He actually fought Bare Knuckle at BKFC, Knuckle Mania. Got one win in MMA after that, and then it's just been a five-fight losing streak since then. So I don't have a lot of confidence in Zach Zane personally. I don't have a lot of confidence in Zach Zane personally. When he was coming up, he was a damn good fighter. And it's not that he's a, not a good fighter anymore, but he's been facing injuries. Shadow of what he looked like on his come up. And I think Yuzuki Yachi is just going to be too much for him. So I got Yuzuki Yachi winning this one. Yuzuki Yachi winning th this one. He's the favorite. Minus 275. Plus 200 is Zach Zane. Like I said, massive fall from grace by Zach Zane. He's still only 33 years of age. He's the same age as... Yuzuki or Yuzuke Yachi, but I do think the Zach Yachi is just the better fighter. So that is my pick, locking it in. We gotta finish the card, brother. We gotta finish the card. But uh, yeah, I probably won't post my UFC prediction video, which I filmed it and I was so close to finish editing it, but hey, it is what it is. The PFL one blew up about like 600 views. All right, Yuzuke Yachi making his walkout now. <sighs> well, I'm glad I made that executive decision not to have more coffee or else I just would not have been able to get any sleep. <laughs> no worries, Jo. Sorry, I can't do it. This is a lesson. I'll be better next time. Next time, just brew a bigger cup of coffee. All good, JL. Thank you so much for tuning in as long as you did. You're an absolute beauty, brother. Thank you for supporting the channel, being a member. And I'll see you tomorrow for some UFC.
Shout out JL and Junior Smooth. Diego's still here. I can't believe it, Diego. Diego, I mean, you watch more fights than me, brother. I love it. Respect. Real quick thoughts on uh, Dumas, Barber, Rowe, and Bruno Silva as dog smart. Fuck, let me grab my list. I don't know where I put it. I literally wrote them all down. Whoops. Uh, give me one sec. Give me one sec. I will do you no know, um, We have a little bit of time here. Okay. You said Dumas as one of the underdogs. Yeah, I don't like him at all. Now, Cody Brundage always disappoints me, but I don't think Dumas is that great. All he's done is crush cans, dude. So I'm not super high on, on Dumas at all, personally. Not to say that I like Cody Brundage, but I, I'm I'm picking Cody Brundage to win that one. Uh, Barber, Macy Barber. Uh no, I'm going with I'm going with Rebass personally. Uh Row. Yeah, I don't like Row either, to be honest. I think I got Neil Magny to win that one. Uh and Bruno Silva. I think he's a good dog. I think Bruno Silva is the best dog out of that whole group. Bruno Silva is that best dog. And if Jillian Robertson is still plus like if she's still plus one hundred, like take her too. Oh, already bet. Oh, oops. Uh, that well, then that's my honest opinion. Respect to you, brother. I'm a machine. Can't say, but again, you you chose the underdog. So like, hey, putting together an underdog bet. I'm sure if those hit, that's gonna pay out. Um, but that's my honest opinion. All right, round one. Let's get it all. Let's get it all. And Yachi already going for the takedown, and he gets it. He was trying to get the suplex, but instead, traditional takedown here. I mean, Ro, Ro might be able to put up a fight against Neil Magny, but I feel like Neil, Neil Magny, like, he'll fight guys who are really good and won't be able to beat them, but then he'll fight, like, younger up-and-comers and just destroy them. A lot of action already in this fight, ladies and gentlemen. Four minutes and 16 seconds on the clock. And Yuzuke Yachi with the back of Zack Zang. Yuzuki Yachi ground and pound on Zack Zang. Zack Zang trying to get back up to his feet, but holding onto his back here is Yachi. And Yachi trying to drag Zack Zang back to the ground. Zack Zang now going for a takedown, pushing. Yuzuki Yachi up against the cage. I was chasing a single leg knee to the body by Zane. I love it, man. One and four. We'll see how it shakes out. Oh, yeah. I also bet uh, Jillian Robertson, too. Glad we agree on that. I mean, I do think she's the better fighter. I do understand why, um, why people are picking Baby Shark, but we'll get into that tomorrow. Have a great one, buddy. Oh, I'll be live. I will be live, 100%. All right, three minutes on the clock here. Still in the first round. Oh. And Zack Zang gave up his back there for a moment. Yuzuke Yachi just utter domination right now in the grappling. Back up to his feet, though, Zack Zane. 
Yasuki Yachi. Oh, a nice right hand. Body lock on Zack Zane. And he's landing some punches to soften him up. And no, oh, huge throw here. Yachi lands some good ground and pound too, but a beautiful throw. And Yachi getting the back of Zack Zane. The body triangle secured. The body triangle secured. Going for that rear naked choke. Two minutes and 18 seconds. Body triangle secured. The rear naked choke is secured. And that is it. Zack Zane's going to tap. And that's it. That's it. That is it. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Yasuke Yachi is a beast and he ragdolled Zack Zane. Zack Zane is now 15 and 15. He's lost six in a row. And there you go. Cash that money. Well, he was the favorite, but cash that money. And you can see a defeated Zack Zane here. Good display of respect by Yachi. Great win there by Achi. I am now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and seven and four in my predictions. Yeah, and Zach Zane now. Fifteen wins, fifteen losses. That's not a good record. And what a fall from grace. I mean, credit him, he was scrambling. He was doing a decent job of getting back up to his feet upon being taken down. But once that body triangle was cinched in, Yachi, I mean, did a good job of securing that choke. Main event of the evening next here, folks. We have made it. We have made it. It is 4.07 a.m., but we have made it to the main event of the evening. Or morning in this case. And we have the second Suzuki brother fighting for an MMA title coming up next year. Great win. Great win. And unfortunate for Zach Zane, he didn't get to, you know, show off his talents. In front of the Japanese audience. But he is thanking the audience, giving him the giving him the heart sign. Right, meeting in the evening next, but before then, Yaki's gonna address the audience. All right, Yachi's just uh, addressing the audience. What is that one thing? Oh, he's asking Ryzen to put him on the Bellator and Ryzen card. He's like, I only got one thing to say. I got nothing going on July 30th. Put me on that card. I would love to see him on that card. No, oh, Yachi, beautiful, beautiful performance there. Easy day at the office. Easy day at the office. Okay, so the first five, the first five fights are in the Bellator cage, and then the second half of the card is going to be in the ring. Interesting. God, I can't wait for that. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this main event of the evening. It's going to deliver, and then after we get to go to sleep. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the main event of the evening. We're just taking a look at the intro video. Man, Ryzen just puts together the best intro videos, man. And these Suzuki brothers are making waves. The elder in kickboxing. Is he training with Technori Gomi? 
Man, this intro is so badass. I mean, clever Kyoki. Half Brazilian. He's not half Brazilian. He's Brazilian, but he grew up in Japan. Man, this, this intro is awesome. And this is what I love most about Ryzen, man, is, is how, how it's like an ode to pride, but, it, you know, they're putting their own new spin on it as well. Well, highlight the fighters in just a moment, then I'll give my official prediction, but the challenger, Chihiro Suzuki, is looking to become a featherweight champion in mixed martial arts. He has a tough task ahead of him, though. A tough task ahead of him. He's only 24 years old. It's so crazy. But fighting's in his blood. Main event. Let's go. We got a... Uh, we have gotten a lot of finishes. Been enjoying this card with you, brother. Likewise, Diego. Likewise, buddy. Dude, the stomps, man. That's so awesome that he trains with Takanori Gomi, man. Now, Gomi obviously is not even fighting anymore, but he was a legend. These Suzuki brothers are the next wave, man, in kickboxing and MMA. And yeah, Clever's last loss was to Patricio Pitbull. It rise in 40. And he's pretty emotional after that loss, too. Man, he's such a submission specialist. My goodness. Fuck, this intro is so good. I love this shit. It's like a whole story, man. These cold opens. Featherweight title match is next, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Let's get into it here. The challenger, Chihiro, Chihiro Suzuki, 10 and 3 in his pro MMA career. He is 5-0 in his last five fights. 24 years old out of Tokyo, Japan. Four KOTKO, one submission, five decision. He went five and one in Ryzen, five and two in Pancrase. He won his last kickboxing match in knockout 23. Before then, in Ryzen, he went two for six fight win streak. One of those being Muay Thai in knockout, my apologies. He beat a 12 and five guy, zero and one, six and six, 39, 21. 17 and 5. So, not your traditional run to a title, but hey, Ryzen doesn't have the deep roster that these other, other big promotions have. Before losing to Soji Mariyama, he primarily fought kickboxing before he transitioned to MMA and started working with Takanori Gomi as his older brother, as we saw as a kickboxer. And he did pretty damn well in Rebel and Knockout. Well, so he actually fought MMA in the beginning of his career, and Pancrase stopped and did a lot of kickboxing and then went back to mixed martial arts. Walking out right now is the challenger, Chihiro Suzuki. Main event of the evening, let's go. And the champion. Kleber Kyoke Erps 
31 wins, six losses, one draw. He is four and one in his last five fights. He lost his last fight, Bellator versus Ryzen, on New Year's last, well, just a few months ago. And when and when your last recent loss is to Patricio Pitbull, a living legend, I mean, no shame in that. No shame in that. He's 33 years old. He is in his absolute prime right now. I mean, he might be a little bit even past his prime given how many fights and how many jujitsu matches he has fought throughout his career. But I digress. Two KOTKOs, 27 submissions. 27 submissions. That is crazy. In his 31 law or 31 wins, 27 of those have been via submission. Two decisions, two KOTKO. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. 80% of his finishes come by submission. Five and two in KSW, six and zero oh in Rise and Zero and One in Bellator. And the Zero One in Bellator is literally just the Patricio fight. Before then, he beat 22 and 8, 6 and 5, 23 and 9, 14 and 2, 14 and 2, 13 and 9, 14 and 8. So, not the worst competition. You know, the best of what Ryzen could give him. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wow. What a tremendous career. And look, his most recent loss since joining Ryzen and his only loss before Patricia was to Mateus Gamrot for the title in Ryzen. He also went and fought in one championship, one championships Japanese series where he beat Akio uh, Nishira via Darstroke in the first round. Look, Kleber Kyoke Erbs is a tremendous champion. His submission game is next level. I think Chihiro Suzuki is going to be maybe not the next one, but in that next wave of Japanese stars. I do think he will fight for the title again. I don't think he has the tools right now, especially when Erbs takes this to the ground. It's not, it's not if, it's when. And I don't think he has the jiu-jitsu defense at this point in his career, but he, he's so talented and he's only 24 years old. I'm going with the champion, Kleber Koik, locking it in. To Susan in the corner there. Like I said, Kleber, minus 350 favorite. Suzuki is plus 240. Chihiro Suzuki, only 24. Very good ceiling. Awesome prospect. Great striker and starting to round out his game. But he's just not there yet to go against someone of Kleber Koik's level. Let's just be perfectly honest. I got Kleber. Love the walkouts there. Just something different. Absolutely. Who do you think is the best striker in the UFC? Um, there's a lot. I, I can't really say that there's one best striker. My favorite strikers right now, I would say, are Calvin Cater, uh, Rob Font's a very good striker, um, Max Holloway's a good striker, Leon Edwards is a tremendous striker, Israel Desanya is a tremendous striker. Um, right off the top of my head, those are some those are some really good ones. What an event this has been indeed, brother. What an event this has been indeed. Hey, Ryzen 43 was hyped up and it delivered. And now, hey, we have one more month until Ryzen and Glory. Oh, sorry, Ryzen and Glory. Ryzen and Bellator. All right, Koiki here. About to enter the ring. Again, this is for the Ryzen Fighting Federation Featherweight Championship belt.
are just being checked by the cut men right now is Earp's cut woman, I should say. Again, shout out to the few people who are watching us right now. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notification so you never miss an upload. We are also going to be streaming UFC tomorrow. Well, in a few hours. Hey, it's 420. Smoke them if you got them. Everyone's asleep. It's just me and you. Yeah. Exactly that. Oh, man. I want to go to a Ryzen event live so bad someday. All right. Fighters are about to be announced in the center of the cage. Yeah, man, this, this card, honestly, it really did deliver. So we had Yachi with a rear naked choke. We had Ueda with KO. Suzuki with a beautiful KO. Hiroki Suzuki with a knee. Kimura with a KO. Um, Oshima with a submission. Knee with a KO. Seki with unanimous decision, but that was a great fight. Joji Goto with a twister. Kuriyama with the huge overhand left. Yamakawa with the three knockdown. And that, and that was just the main card. We had... Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. We had a, a draw, two submissions, and a TKO on the prelim. So, man, what an exciting card indeed. And the Japanese national anthem is being played right here before the main event. I feel you. It would be a dream. It would be going. I would be going nuts at a Ryzen event. Dude, Ryzen and KSW, those are the two events that overseas I'd love to go see. All right, let's see if I can go eight and four. If I could go eight and four in predictions, that would be pretty awesome. I'm pretty confident, though, here in the Brazilian. But if Suzuki, like, cracks him on his way in for a takedown or something, I mean, we've seen some, we've seen some upsets on this card thus far. Accepting the flowers before the fight. It was a big ass flower bouquet. All right, here we go. Here we go. The moment we've been waiting for. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Five rounds, if needed, ladies and gentlemen. This is a title fight. Now the fighters are being officially announced in the center of the cage. I'm tired. I'm sorry. Ring. All right, I'm going to turn this up a little bit. There we go. All right. Jiro Suzuki, 10 and 3, 24 years old. 145 pounds. This is for the Featherweight Championship. Yeah, Diego, that's what... Uh, that's what I heard too. I, I gotta read up, read more on it. But so sad, so sad. The one championship referee. I'm glad one championship uh, paid respect to him uh, on the card earlier earlier this morning. Excuse me. Clever. Coit thirty one. Wins six losses, one draw, 33 years of age. 
Wait, he weighed in 146, so you can give up a pound as a champion in Ryzen? Hey, there you go, there you go. Not bad, not bad. Koike. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Last fight on the card, main event of the evening. Ryzen 43 in the books. Tomaz, hey, I just want to let you know I've been with you for 15 hours. I work overnights in a computer chip manufacturing company, and I'm in a st sterile bodysuit from head to toe that I can't take off. That is crazy. Holy shit. Well, thank you so much for joining. I hope I've helped work somewhat go by a little quicker. Man, thank you so much for the comment. Thank you so much for joining the stream. You're an absolute beauty. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Just like in the movie, so I haven't been able to interact, but I just want to say thank you for streaming all night. Well, thank you for joining, man. Thank you for joining. I appreciate this com these comments more than you know. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Leo, he's about to start. It's about to start. Right, round one, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Tomas, again, thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate that comment. That is so awesome. Hope I helped work uh, go by a little quicker, like I said. All right, four minutes and 45 seconds on the clock. Live play-by-play -play commentary reaction and interaction. Like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Low leg kick by Shirizo. Shihiro Suzuki. Sorry I'm whispering, folks. My roommates are asleep. It's 4.30 a.m. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Ooh, inside low kick checked by Suzuki. And again, Suzuki, very accomplished on the feet. Very good kickboxer. Kyoke, though, I mean, 30... Plus MMA fights, and he's no stranger on the feed yet either. Outside low kick by Kyoke. Kyoke lands some crazy hooks there. Kyoke going for the single leg here, and Kyoke going for the takedown, and he gets it. Looking to try to get back up to his feet is Suzuki. So much harder on these rising ropes. And Kyoke now slowly sinking into full mount here. And he gets a Kyoke in full mount. Kyoke in the full mount. And this is such a dangerous position. Kyoke full mount is going to posture up here. Is he going to posture up? Three minutes and 17 seconds on the clock here. Kyoke in the full mount. Okay, okay, looking to posture up here. Looking to posture up. Suzuki doing a good job of just basically hugging Kyoke here. Trying not allow him to have any room to lay down these big bombs. But Kyoke. Let's see if he's going to set something up or just continue to go for the ground and pound. But he's still in the full mount here. Trying to roll out of this. Even throw some shots on the bottom is Suzuki. Kyoke, though, grabs that right arm of Suzuki. Hammer fist by... Uh, oh, going for the armbar. Going for the armbar. Koike was going for the armbar. Doesn't get it, but now just high, high mount here. Still looking for that armbar. Trying to soften up Suzuki so he can get it. And now he might set up that triangle. Now he might set up a triangle. Going for the arm, going for the arm. And that is it. Oh, that is it. it. That is it. Oh, and still. And still. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Kyoke Erbst with the arm bar and still. Wow. And Suzuki. 
you know, devastated with that. Clever Kyoke running to Suzuki. Great display of respect. And yeah, there's no shame in losing to the submission artist that is Kyoke. And again, like I said, Suzuki, he's in that new wave. He's 24 years old. Hey, this is amazing words of encouragement here by Kyoke. And they go out and they stand together, bow to each other. No, this is awesome. This is this is martial arts, baby. Okay, so Kyoke did miss weight by one pound, so it's a no contest. Okay, okay, I see. Because I saw it was like Kyoke didn't hit the weight limit. So there you go. He missed weight by one pound. So the title wasn't up for grabs. So I wonder, I mean, with such an easy win like that, I mean, I don't think a rematch is even going to happen. What a statement. Wow. Wow. And that was a first round submission. It will count as a no contest because QOK missed weight by one pound. And Suzuki did land one one right hand. But QOK got into full mount, ground and pound, and that was it. Ended up getting that arm bar. Bummer about a mo no contest, but who cares? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a submission win. It may not go down officially on his record, but uh, he he realistically now has 28 submission victories. Wow. Oh, and Suzuki's just devastated, man. Hey, he's... Young man, young fighter. Oh, man, he's absolutely heartbroken. I mean, yeah, and he probably worked so tough, so hard for this one, but, I mean, there's levels to this. He's 24. He has such a bright future in the sport. He's not even at it. The, the, the broadcast is saying he's entering the prime of his career. He's not, he's not even at his career yet. Yo, what's up, Walter? Yeah, we're, we're about to go to bed here soon. We're about to go to bed. I don't think my UFC prediction video is going to drop. Because I really just want to go to sleep. But uh, yeah, and still, and still. What an event, ladies and gentlemen. What an event. Again, shout, shout out to Thomas, or Tomas. Saying, hey, just want to let you know I've been with you for 15 hours. I work overnights in a computer chip manufacturing company. I'm in a sterile bodysuit from head to toe that I can't take off, just like in the movies. So I haven't been able to interact. But I just wanted to say thank you for streaming all night. What a comment. Thank you so much. And QOK is just getting his picture taken, you know, sponsors and everything. And. I'm cooking up a UFC parlay at 2.30 a.m. Man, it's 4.30 a.m. for me. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. It's 4.30 a.m. for me. I mean, I, st I guess I could stay up for like another hour and two hours and try to finish that prediction video. Oh, I'm just so tired. We'll see. We'll see how I feel in like 15 minutes. <laughs> All right. Clever Kyoke is taking the mic. He's going to... Address the audience. Yeah, but I'm on I'm on uh, Central Time. I've been with you the whole time, brother. Thanks for the stream. Thank you, Diego. Get some sleep so you can be fresh and ready for UFC. Diego. Hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Thanks, buddy. So Kyoke is apologizing for not making weight. He was one pound off. Right. 
We're just listening to him address the audience. Saying thank you, Suzuki, for the fight. Man, I need to get some of those rising gloves. I need I need to hang those on the wall. They're the best MMA gloves. I love them. I apologize to Suzuki too for missing weight. So yesterday I was ashamed and upset but with myself, but today's a different day. Oh, now he's uh, speaking Portuguese, I think, addressing friends and family. Yo, CCTV, what's going on? We're about to hang him up. I'm about to uh, get a little sleep here before UFC, buddy. All right, so, so let's do some math. We have been streaming for... Eighteen and a half hours. We have been streaming eighteen and a half hours. Unbelievable. Oh my god, a breakfast burrito sounds so good right now. Fuck, should I just go to Taco Bell and get a breakfast burrito? I don't want to make too much noise upstairs. No, I need to go to bed. What am I talking about? I'll dream of Taco Bell. I really don't like fast food much. I don't even really like Taco Bell at all, but their breakfast, oh my God, oh, to die for. Kyoke saying there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and you can overcome anything if you believe in yourself. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, so yeah, so he got stripped of the belt. So he says, please, I'm sorry for missing weight. Put me in a title fight. I want to take what's mine. So I did notice that walking out that he, he missed weight. And um, good night, brother. Peace. Hope you get some sleep. See you tomorrow at UFC stream. This has been fun. You're a great YouTuber who inspired me, brother. Much respect, brother. I am out. Thank you so much, Diego, for the kind words. You're an absolute beauty. I'm out too, ladies and gentlemen. I am out too. Thank you all so much. I'm so tired. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to go up and give everybody a shout out here, but you guys know who you are. Everybody who joined us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ryzen 43 is in the books until July. Ryzen versus Bellator. I say goodnight to all our Ryzen and Japanese fight friends. We will be back literally in like four and a half or five hours. Seven hours for UFC. Keep your eye out for the video. It will pop up soon. You all are amazing. I appreciate you all. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you on the UFC stream in just a few hours. Good night. Thank you all so much for joining. And have a great rest of your weekend. See you on the UFC stream in just a few hours. Peace out, folks. Good night. Good morning. I'm out of here. Yeah. Oh